Okay, we're on the show, and we're glad to be on the show. And this sounds so cool. Isn't it? Well, we've got a little Doo-doo. echo. little echo. That's okay. We're going to have to... Uh, this is the perfect time to sing. I like the echo. Let's just la, learn la, to live la. with the echo. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe... Echo, there's a band. I've Thank you. Echo and the Bunnymen. Echo and the Bunnymen. Yeah. Works for me. They're a good band, actually. They're not that good. No. <laughs> no, they I actually are. I bought their record. <laughs> Donna, you agree they with me? They actually are. They actually are. I bought their record. I don't record. even know how they made they, they, how, how yeah, they, they, they were made very average. <laughs> they didn't have good melodies. I think they, they made it because of their name. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They made I it because of their name. The name. <laughs> it was a really mm-hmm. stupid name that mm-hmm. just caught the zeitgeist of the times. Mm-hmm. Yes, and even that word zeitgeist. I love that word. I zeitgeist love is that a, word. Yeah, that's Anything great. that starts with a Z or a Z mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's especially mm-hmm. great in Scrabble. Oh, we need <laughs> right? Triple you need two E's. You need two <laughs> I's. Triple <laughs> word score. Yeah, exactly. Right? Ten, exactly. Z. Quadruple. It's like X. You get a lot of uh, you get a lot of X. points for X too. X and Z are ten. Yeah, imagine yeah, if you yeah, could do eczema because yeah. now you have the X and the exactly. Z. Oh boy, that's exactly. a good word. Oh, that's a good word. That's a real that's good. A good word. You <laughs> rarely see that somebody throw that down in Scrabble. I know. You rarely see that. You got to put the X down or the Z on a triple wow, letter score. you're gonna win. And another one win. on the triple word score. That's a game <laughs> over Change. word. Yeah, you're that's done. That's a game over. You're yeah. done. That's a game over. You're done. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, we're really starting off uh, with a lot of excitement. Do, do, I feel like I want to play Scrabble now. No, me too. <laughs> you know what? I gave up on Scrabble for years, but over Christmas I played Scrabble and I won. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> did you use eczema? I had a good Z triple word score. Oh, that's I did. See, he knows. Wow. Near the end. I wow. forget what it was, but it was a good wow. it was a game winner. Awesome. You know, and uh, I'm back into the Scrabble mode. It's been a long time, but I'm Scrabble. I'm back. Okay, so you know That's what? Good. Next week I'm going to bring the Scrabble board, and we'll put it right here. Maybe we could make a whole show. It's nothing but Scrabble. Well, we could have <laughs> all the guests put in words. Maybe all the guests. Like we could have ours here, and then the guests over there, and then they can just play. If the new gu- the other guests can come on and put a word, and then the next guest can come on. And I think that's this? a good idea. You could play Monopoly. You could play that's chess. Cool. You could play a whole bunch of different games too. Or maybe we could just paint the room and watch the paint dry. <laughs> no, it's not that boring. <laughs> no, okay. Or 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 <laughs> to that point, we can watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I think if you're a Broncos fan, you prefer to watch the paint dry. Oh, right. Did you watch yeah. the Super Bowl? No. No, I didn't watch it. But either. I heard about it. I just watched the halftime show. Yes, I watched the halftime show. I saw highlights of the halftime show. So this year, big big news this year, it wasn't a satanic Illuminati ritual like it was last year. <laughs> that is because right. the light is taking over. To that I, point? Yeah. Thank you for the segue. <laughs> <laughs> We're not starting the official interview with Donna yet, so go. Okay, I just want to, uh, I'm having an online chat tomorrow. Uh-huh. Um, because I'm doing, for the first time, we're doing Shift into One online. Yeah. Um, starting in February 26, which is a Wednesday. And um, so we're doing these uh, online chats to give people an idea as to what Shift into One is all about. And um, what? So, um, <laughs> so tomorrow. I'm paying attention. Let's <laughs> <laughs> play with his is cell phone. Is he looking at his watch? No, what his is cell he phone. His oh, cell geez. phone. Isn't that the worst? And he's taking SIO. Isn't that the worst? I know. Cell phones have to be, cell phone manners have to be I know. Off. There has to be etiquette. There, we'll there put, has to be Maybe etiquette. that can be talked on the chat. But tomorrow's <laughs> chat is going to be about money. Okay, so we're going to talk about the, the system of money, the concept of money, and we're going to talk about um, how money is the root of all suffering. So anybody who wants to come in and listen on the call, just check it out. Uh, check uh, me out on Facebook or go to the website, and you'll get the information. ShiftIntoOne.com. That sounds great. Yeah. Shift and and com. you can type in questions, okay? Yeah. So I, I challenge everybody and anybody to mention anything to me, yeah. and we will turn it right down to the fact that it's all about money. Everything wow. is about money, wow. even food. Money equals food in North America. Money is more wow. important than food in North America. And so mm-hmm. we're gonna, we'll talk about that. So anybody, throw anything out there, and we'll show how it's all down to money. Whose fault is that? All of us, because we all agreed yeah. to it. We, we did? Into it. That's why we're bringing it up to light now, because the only way we're going to change it is if we become aware of it, if we embrace it, not fight it. We don't resist it. You embrace it, and that's how you bring the change. So you beat them at their own game, basically, is what you were doing. 
that's how you do it. That's how you transform. So that's what uh, we're. That's why we're going to talk about money tomorrow. Awesome. So okay, yeah. So then go to shiftintoone.com. Yes, 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 yes. Get yes. all the info. Okay. I, w I, I hope I can be there. Yeah. Well, you should throw some. Even if you can't, you throw some things out. There's a video. There's an audio recording afterwards too. Yeah. What so time is it again? What time is seven, it? Seven. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, throw things out there because everything comes down to money. Okay. Money, and the title is called "Money is the Cause for Separation, Not Celebration." Okay, unless you get wow. a lot of money. Then That's still the cause. More separation, the more money, the more separation. <laughs> Look at perfect no. example. Uh, um, Seymour, Philip Seymour, Philip Seymour Hallmar, Hoffman. Hoffman. Sorry, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mm -hmm. That man, he was. Uh, I read an article about him yeah. because we all know he OD'd and he's passed away, right? You know about Philip. Hoffman. I didn't actually yeah, know. Yeah, he just died like. That. Yesterday. Two days ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, cra a cocaine or heroin or something. Oh my he was goodness. shooting up in the bathroom. And he found they found a syringe. That's the actor, right? Yes. Yeah. The He's very a brilliant actor. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. And he was quoted in one of his articles saying that he was happier when he was more free when he had nothing. He was wow. much happier when he had nothing. Wow. You know what's interesting? Last night, remember Marcus Rothkrantz, who we had here on the show? Yes. Right. So yes. I have his book, and I was yes. just looking at it last night because I don't actually read; I just look at books. Um, Thanks, you. <laughs> 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 Except Donna's. <laughs> uh, I was looking at his book, and um, uh, there was a, a little thing in there saying that you know, unless you have your, um, unless you're happy with yourself, Means then nothing. making, uh, having a lot of money is worse than having less money. You know, you need to be. Yes, yes. I, number I one, you got to be happy with I, yourself. I agree. That's why I, I agree. think you have a, a lot of people in third world countries who are happier. Mm -hmm. the, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I know I know a guy who's from Colombia, and he's a vet here, and um, and the country in Colombia where he came from is, is much poorer, and and he came here for, of course, a better life. Mm -hmm. He said he's actually was happier over there. If he could go back, he would go back. He said they don't have as much stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. so their standard of life is lower, but their quality mm -hmm. of living is higher. Plus, mm -hmm. they have. This is my little theory: is that because even in our in Canada. Up until recently, w everyone was still t building the material dream, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. getting the second mm -hmm. car, mm -hmm. getting the washer mm -hmm. and dryer, second mm -hmm. car, getting the all that. Mm -hmm. Now we uh, everybody's got all that. Right? And now, yeah, well, now we're. In, I you notice well, you said second everybody. car though. Yeah. See, now it's yeah. not enough to have one car. It's yeah. not enough to have one TV. No. It's not enough to have one computer. Everybody wants more, more than one. Because more is better. I've seen houses with three and four car garages. Oh yes. Yeah. And that's insane to me. Well, it's like those songs from the 80s, right? A New Order actually did a song, and it's like, hark, it's never enough. It's never enough until your heart stops beating. That's right. And it's that's the same. true. It's, it's that's that, true. It's that kind of attitude. They yep. just keep going. Get more, get more, get more, get more, get more. You know? So, so yeah. And then you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. You can't. It doesn't fit under six feet under. That's why we wear immortality rings, so we don't mm -hmm. have to give it up. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But exactly. even the immortality rings will only last for so long because don't they fade too? Well, when they fade, you just get new tape. <laughs> <laughs> right? New duct tape, I right? I still got to get those immortality rings. That's right. Because you bought I'm a so pair, overdue. Donna, and then you so unbought the pair. And then I unbought the pair. Oh, you know what, Donna? Look at you. <laughs> Every time I see you, you look younger. <laughs> so whatever you're I doing. Look younger? Yes, you do. Oh my goodness! It's yes. probably because I didn't wear makeup. You're looking very <laughs> fresh. You are looking you, very fresh you look today. At, you look like an ivory girl. I, I actually exercise this morning too. Exercise. I exercise every day, seven days a week. Wow. What? My treadmill is my friend. Okay, Last wait. time. <laughs> wait. We're already talking to Donna. We haven't yeah. even started the official interview, with Donna. Let's be. Let's just get into that, okay? But let's tell people who else we got coming okay, on the okay. show today first. Uh, we have Sunshine Dave and Laura, I think, coming on the show. Any minute. Laura. They're over there in the big room mm -hmm. uh, doing stuff. Okay, Laura it's Brooks. beautiful in here. Do you know Laura Brooks? I do. You do? I do. Sandra knows everyone. The city's only got 5 million people, so <laughs> is, is it any wonder <laughs> we all know everybody? Uh, also, Michael Moon is coming on the show. He's got a new uh, triple CD, uh, To Save the, the Earth. And, he's, <gasps> and today is a premiere. Never before on wow. any media has this music Ooh. been played. Also, Jimmy Dick is coming on, Native Elder. Coming on today, wow. and Lucky oh. Ojo from the African Society. You know what? If we show. have a chance, yeah. um, can we find on YouTube? There's a video called Youth Shift Africa. 
It is day. phenomenal. Do we have too many videos? I don't know. We'll see if we can get up later in the show. Okay. It would be perfect segue for the topic, I it think. It just might be. It's, it's fun. I actually listen to that and it lifts me up every day. It's like my, oh, my, my mantra. Fantastic. It's, oh. it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Wow. Wow. Okay. But I just want to say with Africa, it's really important. I'm sorry. I have a lot to say today. I don't know what's up with that. Nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. No. I'm sorry. He wants There's to show There's a lot me wrong up. with it. <laughs> 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 it's a okay, talk forget show. it. That's okay. No, come on. Talk. Say it. Okay. Go ahead now. So now I made him look like the bad guy. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay. I just want to say with respect to Africa, Africa is the cradle of civilization. We owe everything to Africa. Energetically, Amen. we owe everything to Amen. Africa. It's true. In, indeed, because <laughs> they are the first people ever on s as civilization. We are the Aboriginal people. And I they think. are the people who are, they have led the way on everything. They have mm -hmm. led the way, even in the suffering, even in the way Thank that they're you, suffering Thank for you, us Sandra. to catch a clue. And look you how long it's taking us. should be in the school board teaching. I, I'm not just talking. I'm hey, talking it's about Black History Month too. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. but, uh, but I'm not just History talking month. about the people. I'm talking about the animals. I'm talking about yes. the environment. I'm talking yes. about the energy center that Africa exactly. is. I love giraffes. Uh, well, absolutely, and they're part of it. Gira giraffes and elephants. Why I do love they have elephants. such a long neck? I love elephants. Oh. Why? Because there's they're, because they've buried their head in the sand for so long because of humanity's <laughs> not waking up. <laughs> That's why. They're finally coming out now because we're saying thank you. We're finally acknowledging them. That's why. The giraffes. Yeah, we're acknowledging all of Africa. But it's you were really, really, tell really a joke, important. You? Were you he was trying to. I know. I told I know. a joke already. Oh, oh I, d I missed it. When I said Oops. I love giraffes, that's an inside joke. Oh, okay. I don't know if anybody's going to get that. <laughs> okay. When I said I love giraffes, that's an inside joke. The other thing I just want to mention before we move on to Donna <laughs> is the Occupy movement yeah. started in Tanzania, which what? is. Yes, it didn't start in the States, it started I in didn't Tanzania. Know that. That's where the energetic movement first got its core. So once again, Africa, because that's Africa, correct? Yes. So once again, they're at the core of the revolution of change. So Africa is really who we owe everything to. I hear it's the most ha it's it's where you want to be these days. Well, you know what? It's about time they get something. Yeah. So All right. anyways, okay. there, enough Very of my, my rant, sorry. Great. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. No, well, it's so okay. true. <laughs> so we are joined at the table here now, in case you didn't know already, by Donna Kekonge and Donna. Always good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Always good to be here. You're further away from me now. I had to drive a little further. That traffic on Eglinton, Come my on. goodness. Well, it's got to be better than <laughs> driving downtown, though. At least you it didn't is. have to drive downtown. I didn't downtown. even have to pay for parking. See? I'm so grateful yes, about that. Yes, yes. That's $22 less right there. Yes. Exactly. You pay $22? Yeah. When I used to park at your old location, I would park at the one kind of a, a, in Atrium by the Bay okay. underneath. That was about $22 sometimes. Wow. Yeah. yeah okay. Because I come early. I go to the world's biggest bookstore. Of course, hang okay. Out there, of course. Like, they're closing know, yeah. down. What? Do you know they're closing it down? The, the world's, world's biggest, biggest bookstore? Book store, yeah. Seriously? Because nobody reads books anymore. They just look at them. Oh, no. Uh, hmm. So, Donna, so everybody's moving out of downtown. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we I started think, it. Oh, I think my it's a good goodness. idea to move out of downtown. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know what Are now? They moving? No, they're closing it down. They're closing. Who needs books? Well, e-books. Right? Who you, needs books, Donna? You are so bad. Well, I shouldn't say that to an <laughs> author, right? I shouldn't say that to an author. Well, Indigo seems to be doing really well, and I'm actually going to be at Indigo really? on um, on Saturday, yeah. and the one at the Eaton Center, and from one to four, and I'm going to be promoting how to talk to crazy people, especially this version. This version, which is I don't think I've seen this cover that's, before. That's, that's a the, beautiful that's cover. Actually, the original printing of the book, and yeah. then everything's fine between uh, the publisher and I. The original publisher Edward didn't really quite work out, so it was self-published. Yeah. And that was the original printing, so I got eighty copies of those, so ready to uh, go for sale. So, and it says sixteen, no vignettes of sixteen breakdowns. Yes, yes, because that's what I went through during my twenties. That and yeah, I, it's it's a long way from there. I tell you, wow. my goodness, you yeah. come across on it as so together, so full of life. I do feel much better, that's for sure. Like you know, and I find it um, sometimes it's like I don't know if you ever know life has a way of sometimes 
you do a bit of a dance, right? Like, you know, you, you take a step forward, something happens, step, you know, puts you back a little yep. bit, and then it's kind of like, could be a relationship, something like that, and then you realize, no, no, okay, it's time to take some steps forward again, right? So, and then usually, like, you're stronger, wiser, older, stronger, wiser because of the experience that you can move forward even a little bit faster and recover a little bit faster from any setback. You know? So what so. what what gives you that internal strength to do that though? I think sometimes, you know, I'll have my days when I wake up and it's like, I'm like, oh, geez, okay, same thing again. Okay, I got to exercise. I got to do this. I got to do that. Okay, I got to do my work. I got to do, you know, and uh, so sometimes it's just very rote, you okay. know, like yeah. sort of like, you know, just seems like, you know, the same thing every day. And then usually I'll try to, I know it's like, I have a really strong faith system. Really, I do. Like, you know, I really believe in God. Like, I really believe there is a God. I do believe there is a creator. I do believe there is something more powerful than all of us out there. And um, I think that really helps, definitely. Okay. Okay. And and also my nieces really help a lot, too, because seeing them, it's like, you know, I always think to myself, I want to do things to make them proud. I want to do things that, like, you know, when they're, like, my age, they can speak well of me. They can feel proud proud of me they can feel like I've done good things like I've helped them in many ways I like helping other people I genuinely do like you know mm -hmm. some of the services mm -hmm. I offer is like seeing other people see their books come to reality because I was very fortunate with the creation of how to talk to crazy people like I got a lot of great help with it and I like helping people like Teresa Maddaleno who was on the show yes. last yes. year yes. with her book yes. Girl Power yes. Chronicles of the True Power of Female friendships that's a great book that's a great great book and it was she wonderful had some interesting stories she's actually. got some great stories yeah. in that and it was wonderful wonderful working with her on that book and so I enjoy doing this and like you know ever since I was seven I knew that I wanted to write and I'm just fortunate mm. that you know even though it was kind of like a bit of a winding path like I really actually you know that's pretty much what I do now that's pretty much what I do everything that I do pretty much involves writing too bad He's that's smiling. all obsolete now right donna <laughs> what are you gonna do after nobody now, reads to anymore a certain extent, <laughs> to a certain extent you know i have some ideas around that i don't know if i should be discussing yeah. them or anything like that Absolutely. but actually you know what i want to try and get into and anybody who feels that they can help me with the technological aspects of this please contact me because i really want to try and have like um multimedia ebooks you know because i think ebooks seem to be the way of the future right so i'd love to get to the point where the majority Majority of the work that I'm putting out there are like you know you get video embedded in it you get audio embed embedded in it and and photographs and it's like you know it's like you open up the ebook and it's like it's a movie multimedia document it's like right? the newspapers so. in Harry Potter exactly right? exactly yeah. exactly like the newspapers in Harry Potter yeah. and you can read a story basically based on that like I mean I wouldn't be surprised if there aren't some people even experimenting with that and Google please don't steal my idea because I am a law student but like you know so but you know it's that it's that is getting that kind of harnessing that that kind of you know technological well, you know, sort of savvy but to is, be able to do to produce those. Isn't it just as simple as saving your document as a PDF? I would think so, but the only thing with the PDF is a PDF makes it static, right? So, you so can make a PDF, a PDF, you can PDF doesn't have moving images. Oh. Like an MPEG. Now MPEGs do, right? So, well, but then, yeah. but then it's a mm. matter of how to get it so that it looks like a storybook, right? So that it's pure text. And then, and then image, and then like a little movie, and then a little audio, and then photos, yeah. and then, you know, woven all within one story, right? Why not just make a video? Who needs text? Text is gone. N I want to see text. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a writer. <laughs> that's, that's too bad. But, you know, you know, how about... Many people would agree with you. <laughs> no, no, how about texting, writing telepathically wow i wish i could do that i wish that i could do that well, i would love to be able stick. to do that <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could do that too <laughs> i wish i could do that too <laughs> then if we flew around on a blue stick and we played scrabble we could go behind the person and see what their letters are actually go go to to vegas yeah, that'd be kind of cool sure we could go to vegas <laughs>
if you could if you could read and write telepathically, you could see what the hands are of the other people. Right? When you're exactly, cards, exactly, you exactly. Always win. You could clear you could clean house, right? And then and then you'd be dealing with like the, the suffering of money but with a lot of money. Exactly. <laughs> then we would have to then you'd be calling on the chat, yes, and then we'd say, Okay, wait a second, how about if I won every single dime there is to say, win? Say if I have fifty million dollars, but you know, it's yeah. like <laughs> And I'm very happy. <laughs> but, well, you know what? I don't think, I think there's always going to be a need for reading. As long as there's mm. a need for talking to each other and yes. communicating with yes. each other, I think there yes. always will be. Actually, they, they were really scared that newspapers were going to die, right? They so there dying. was a period. They are dying. Like, they are not as strong as they were, obviously, in, like, 1908 or anything like that, they right? They are going like down. They, 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 they are. They are, yes. But actually, like, certain news events, certain news events, like the whole Rob Ford thing, and I don't want to get into that necessarily, but, like, Rob Ford and all these different major news events, and when things like the Olympics come up and these major news events happen, the newspaper sales always start shooting back up again, actually. Well, yeah, but you know what? Think about it. You can't, if you're in the subway, mm. you don't have a connection. That's right. So That's right. Get, That's you right. Will. That's right. And when Th that that will come. That will, yes, I agree do you with think you. So? Do it you it think will that? come. I oh, yeah. I, 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 do, I do think that yeah. will happen. They're okay. actually trying, as far as I know, they're trying to figure out how to do that, how to get a connection from that far down where, where yeah. the tunnel is, right? So, but yeah. So it's a technological it's, um, it's just, impediment right like, now. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. A lot of these things are technological impediments. Like, you know, mm -hmm. even with like creating multimedia ebooks, too, it's like, how do you get something that has text? It looks like a book basically but we'll have an inserted movie and almost like something then that people can self-publish themselves where you can insert a, a, an M, mp4 right so you can M, insert an mp3 you can have text within a book right and 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 you can still save that in a format so that it can all run smoothly right wow. so that's what I'd like to do that's what I'd like to do. Wow. So if anybody out there knows how, that has the technological savvy to work with me on that, but it's my idea. I'm okay. the boss. You know, I'm going to give you a little <laughs> idea. Because you know Kindle, right? It sounds Kindle, like the kind yes. of thing that, yes. that you might want to get to work on Kindle. Yes. And also, uh, there's a competitor to Kindle mm. called Kobo. Yes, I'm actually, on both, They're actually. actually based here in Toronto. You're on That's Kobo? Right. You're That's on? right. Yeah, I'm on Kobo and Kindle. And, and so yeah. maybe, I mean, the, there they are. They're trying to uh, push forward that product. They're in a competitive environment with Kindle. Yes. And they're actually developing this stuff right here in Toronto. Yes, you know, exactly. Go talk to those guys. Yes, I should. You know, You're it right. sounds to me, too, if, they, if that technology was developed, think about it's a perfect ad campaign because you are mm -hmm. dealing with every form of media in that one piece. Exactly. So you're not having exactly. to deal with all these separate Exactly. Forms. That's really amazing. That would actually Cause, be really, Because I think really I think it could actually. I think it's. I think it's so much that maybe people are looking for new ways of reading so much as much as you know, and and that's probably why not as many people are reading. Like, because I know a lot of people are texting, right? Mm -hmm. So people mm -hmm. are reading, and people are sending emails and are reading still emails. Yes. But yes. You know, so still communicating. And exactly. And there's actually a writer in Britain who uh, writes these um, like flash. Uh, short stories or like flash stories and they're like sometimes one page two page short stories and like you can read the entire book and mm. it's great for somebody who would be so-called diagnosed with ADHD because yeah. the minute you know the story's done and you move on to something else it's very quick it's yes, like yes. almost like it like text quick cuts right? it's like a commercial so, exactly they're like commercials but they're stories yeah. right so so and 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 that kind of writing is and and also, Life Rattle Press does some of that with some of the uh, stories they produce, too. Very short two-page, one-page stories, and mm. then in, in anthologies, and um, and just move on to the next story. So, and I think it does, it feeds for people like yourself, Hugh, that don't really like to read, right? Because then you can flash through a book, and, and if you catch even, like, you know, ten of the stories, then you feel like, yes, I've read it. No, right? I heard, so. though, Donna, that they were developing, this was a long time ago, so they've mm -hmm. probably made progress, mm -hmm. where you don't even need to read. You just take a pill, and you get all that knowledge. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> right, Sandra? 5D. Yeah, 5D. That's, you know what? That's really? 5D. So just, uh, yeah. 5D? What's 5D? 
That's oh. what it's called? Uh oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> 5D is fifth dimension. You need oh, I see. I do know what fifth dimension is. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you yes. know what? But they actually say that there are some kids in Japan right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. um, and they're actually being. Um, studied and observed and mm -hmm. worked with these kids can actually read with their feet that's fascinating and the kids actually have i don't know um what you would call it but they all they have these ex these extra abilities or these super abilities they mm -hmm. can take this book okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they can just do this mm -hmm. read it but not only do they read it they can mm -hmm. feel if there's mm -hmm. anything described in here say about a smell of something you're outside mm -hmm. and you're smelling mm -hmm. the flowers they can smell the flowers if you're ca talking wow. about a recipe wow. they can taste the food wow i believe the ability to do that that is using a part of the brain that we don't use. Well, right? that, uh, so maybe we're starting to tap into it. It's basically, because I do know how to speed read. I do know how to do that. Oh, you but, do? Oh, yeah. I know how to speed read. But, I mean, being able to do that, being able to do that, I think is be is using that, uh, like, because apparently we only use a certain percentage yes. of our brain, yes. right? Yes. You know, there's all that gray matter that we're not using, yes. right? Yes. So, yes. so that's, that's, these are children that have basically either been trained or somehow, they most likely trained to use that all that I think they're part. born that way. I they're actually think they're born that way. way. Wow, very but I th fortunate. I think the reason I'm saying that is because it actually reminds me of what you want to accomplish. Exactly. Because kind of, it's bringing exactly. everything to life, but it's innate with them. And they exactly. can, it's like these words are um, jumping off the pages and they're, wow. they're creating a sensorial experience that is fascinating. through the other senses wh other than just the, the, the intellect of reading. Yeah, so the, wow. and, geez, if I had that link, but it's they're studying these kids and they're in Japan. Wow. And this was before Fukushima, okay? So it's not the result of Fukushima. Yes, of course. Of course, yes. Wow. Well, yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Donna, listen, yeah. we don't have a lot of time. Left. Okay, so what okay. Else do we need to let well, you know well, about? what else? I I'm, I also have a join the writer's circle. Thank you very much. Um with uh, Dr. Sheila Stewart and Cynthia Reyes and um uh, to also Teresa Madalena will be there too at Indigo at the Bay and Bloor location and we're going to sit down talk about books that he doesn't read but how about for um, people who want to it, become authors published authors yeah it would it'll be, be a great uh chance for uh people who want to become published authors to come and meet with us you know talk about books you know find out a bit more about you know maybe how they could become authors there's a variety of us everywhere from self-publishing to traditional publishing okay. too oh, wow. and um mm -hmm. as well for anybody out there who has a book project that they, they would be interested in um in working with me on and uh, I offer editing services, marketing and advertising services for really much, much, much lower than you may find from other people. And because uh, I like to keep it reasonable and affordable because, yes, money can be a huge problem for many people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes money can be the exact thing that stops them from realizing mm -hmm. their dreams. Right. Yes, so yes. I don't want to be that obstacle. So um, hopefully my website will be given and I'm sure you have it. And and. Uh, <laughs> well, Donna, I, I, as a matter of policy, I always ask the guests to say it. Uh, to say it? Okay. To state it, and then we put it in the to credits. To state it, and then you put it in the credits. Yeah. Okay. Well, my uh, website is donnakokonge.com, D-O-N-N-A-K-A-K-O-N-G-E.com. And uh, that's my website, and just www before that, and uh, my contact information is on there. Probably best to reach me at my Gmail account to get in touch with me the fastest. And uh, this, so hopefully from there I can get some people to work with on their book projects. And don't worry if you're not in Toronto as well, because a lot of the work we can do online. Yeah. That's so or, or through That's Google perfect. Hangout, you know, Google Hangout, like yeah. you know, can kind or of have Skyping meetings that way. Skyping, exactly, yeah. exactly. So they can go to your website, and so these are people, you know, mm -hmm. that are thinking of writing a book. You can help exactly. them do that, exactly. or if they're just want to read your book and find out exactly about those find fascinating out more and i've got there. tons of other books too so this isn't the only book i've i've written so so this um and i'm also starting to translate books into french so i can give some guidance about that into other languages especially there could be languages that you know that other people know that they have more expertise in and i can you know kind of give them some tips on how they can make sure it's translated or maybe they have a book that could be in arabic and they want to make sure it's in english and right. 
and right. you know they do mm. a basic translation through Google Translate or something like that, and then I can do the fine tuning editing or something. Okay, so, so you're going to be at Indigo mm. at the Eaton Center uh, this Saturday. Okay. Uh, so that's the eighth yep. uh, from one to four, yep. and then on uh, February seventeenth, seven to nine at um, at the Indigo Bay and Bloor. Okay. And oh, is, are these where you're a book signing or is this the writer circle? My book signing is on uh, this Saturday on the 8th okay. and then the writer's circle is on the 17th. Okay. Fabulous. Okay. Okay. And, wow. Uh, I suppose yeah. you keep anything else in the future when people are watching this in the future yeah, on Donna. And Kakonge.com website. Exactly, exactly. Check out my website. And I also have a magazine, Donna Magazine. And um, so I have updates on there of uh, the things coming up. And, of course, this uh, the interview will also be on Donna Magazine as well. So there's Thank kind you. of Watch some nice – Watch out, nice Oprah. Nice Okay, Donna. Well, no, no, I can't touch her. Okay. She's just way too big. Right, <laughs> she's okay. she's the queen. I'm I'm the minion. <laughs> All right. Not to me, you know. Okay. I so, will thank you. Donna, thanks again for coming on the show. Always great to uh, Thank uh, you very much. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, and we were mentioning Japan and those yes. uh, phenomenally uh, gifted, children. gifted children. And yes. who knows the reason why, but we did get some video. This is new video of the last tsunami. Oh. We're going to well, play that now. What do you mean the last tsunami? The last one. The one they had like a couple oh, years ago. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The bad one. The big, big, big the one. The big, okay. big one. Okay. We have some new video, and uh, we're going to come back with uh, Sunshine Dave and Laura as Look for Lunch continues. Maybe our guests now can uh, play a role in making sure that that doesn't happen. Well, our guests are all about love, so if love has anything to do with it. What's love but got to do with uh, it? We're going to find out right now. <laughs> We've got Sunshine Dave and Laura Brooks uh, joining us. And uh, Okay, Laura might be a little bit young, but what's love got to do with it is a song sung <laughs> by Tina Turner, okay? Do you remember that song? Yeah. Oh, I you do? Okay. I love Tina Turner. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so you you your oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was Who all the risk, brother. Who could not love Tina Turner? <laughs> she was, she's just amazing. 
Yeah. As are you guys. Thank you. So, there, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I'm there. always talking. I'm I giving know. the floor to you. So what are we talking about today, guys? Because Dave, you've been here a few times, but Laura, it's her, your first time on the show, although you know Sandra, because mm-hmm. I met you at one of Sandra's events not too mm-hmm. long ago. Right? Yeah. 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 So what's the story, guys? What's going on? Uh, we're going to talk about mind, body, soul healing today. Okay. It's a collective of nine healers, and we're looking to do a lot of events across Toronto in the upcoming months. Nice. So outdoor we, events? Sunshine, out, outdoor or? and indoor. Okay. Indoor for now. It's not very nice out No, now. but I know you're <laughs> big on outdoor <laughs> events. Although it's That's starting to feel like yeah. spring with that sunshine. And even today, even though it's pretty cold, it's starting to feel like uh, spring's just starting to Only two more months of winter. Yeah. We're almost there. Only a few more months. No, yeah. no, six <laughs> weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Big it's difference to me. <laughs> that groundhog. I know. Okay. So are you two of the nine? Two yes. of the nine, yes. Wow, okay. Yeah. Laura, so I then, know who's, I want to know who seven yeah. of nine is. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Laura is seven of nine. Do you understand that comment? You can't label okay. us. Okay. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> can't number or label us. <laughs> no. Well, no, Star Trek, the Borg, <laughs> seven know. of nine. I know. That was the comment. Well, X Borg. X Borg, yes. Federation crew member now. Okay, yes, Ingrid that's right. Sandy. She was assimilated. Yeah. Yeah. As are we all going to be once we go to the healings. Have, have you guys yeah. been assimilated? Um, I don't follow Star Trek. But you are part <laughs> of a collective. <laughs> yes. Yes. So she, you have been assimilated by unity consciousness. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything's combining right now. The individual journey is combining with the collective journey right now. It's, groups are starting to connect different people. And yeah. So uh, to that point, <laughs> how did the nine of you guys get together? Uh, our good friend, John Arjun, mm-hmm. uh, the creator of Mind, Body, Soul Healing, uh, he created a website and he was looking to add uh, different friends and healers who he was comfortable with and provide different services for people. And Laura's yeah. got like a big list on there with everything that we provide. Yeah. So does everybody do something different? Is that how that works? Yeah, pretty much. Like okay. there's, uh, there's a range from uh, Bach flower remedies, ion cleansing, reflexology, feng shui, um, wow. And then different healing modalities besides Reiki, and then different kind of uh, varieties of Reiki, like shamanic Reiki, uh, space clearing, all all sorts. And what are the S- other healings besides Reiki? Because I know, I mean, um, I hear about energy healing, but all I really know about is Reiki. All that vortex seems to be healing, of course. Of yeah. course, yes, I know the vortex healing, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, there's uh, quantum Reiki massage, ah, uh, okay. and then the shamanic Reiki as well. Okay. Um, wow. And then I, I do a healing modality called Zenith Omega. Okay, yes. Which is kind of similar to uh, vortex. So um, the, you're just uh, releasing energetic blocks, and you, you feel better after the hour, and and all it's of wonderful. these are no touch, right? Or are they touch? Yeah, mine is no touch. Okay. And <coughs> yours is? N- well, they can be touch or no touch. Okay. I find touch generally amplifies the healings for people okay. who are comfortable with it. Yeah. But with Reiki, yeah. there's touch for sure. And, How about all and touch and no contact? <laughs> 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 it's like a... Like a what? <laughs> like a virgin. <laughs> Yeah, I could tell there was a song lyric in there somewhere. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we're just... moving from <laughs> Tina Turner <laughs> to Madonna? Well, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, but don't forget, we did hit on uh, Carol Pope in between. We did? Rough trade. I, I wasn't here for that. All touching, all touching, no contact. Oh, okay, oh, that song, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I now love that song. Y- you know that song, too? <laughs> I don't I remember love that one. Wow, yeah. okay. That was the 80s, too. Yeah, yeah that was 80s. That yeah. was the 80s. Yeah. 80s yeah. is okay. the greatest decade ever for music. I don't care what anybody I, says. I agree. You don't know about that. I think the 60s. I, I say the 70s. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So I think the 80s wins, two 80s, 60s, and 70s. So I think, okay. uh, I think we're Okay, so I heard music's going to disappear. I know that's not the topic. Okay, first reading's going to disappear with yeah. you, reading's now music. What's, what's music. left? Is eating going to disappear well, too? All, all this healing that these guys are talking about and the combining of the collectives, like that Dave's talking about, maybe that's the direction it's going. Actually, mm. I want to ask you guys, mm. you know, let's get into something. Because you guys do this work, right, as part of this healing collective, like, yeah. Like, where are we going as a society with all the stuff that's happening? Dave, you're saying everything's combining. Like, where are we headed? Where are we headed? Like I said, the individual journeys combining with the collective journeys. So people who are ready are, you're not even seeking stuff out. People will come to you, different groups. And like 2014 is the year of shock and awe, in my opinion. What does that mean? Uh, okay. You're going to see like this system start to crumble and break down. 
and you may see a mass awakening on the planet. It's already happening, not really in North America, you know, or the most mm. sleep society in the world. We believe mm. we're free, mm. but uh, you're gonna, I think you're going to see great changes this year, and it's going to be an intense year for energies too. Yeah, a lot more than last year. Okay, oh. and, and so Laura, what do you have to say about that? Can you get into some of the specifics? Well, I think w what's coming up for me is to that we're all. Uh, we're aware of the community aspect and we're coming together more often. But it's also to focus on the self-love for ourselves, to feel like we have a strong foundation to go out and do what we're meant to do and, and to fulfill our soul purpose. So once, you know, and it helps to make sure that you're doing a job that you love, that you're, you know, whatever, it's working with animals or people. Um, you know, if you're an accountant and that's that doesn't uh, do float it. your boat anymore, then you know, looking at taking some more courses or whatever it is, uh, you know, volunteering has has uh, been a good path for me to to realize what I'm meant to do and to work with people. Like, that's completely, uh, we learn by, by working with people. So uh, I think that's really important. But then also, I think part of our, our vision is, is to create more opportunities to come together as a community, whether it's eight people meditating together or just you know sharing what we're going through, having uh, sacred talks, all of that is is going to help us uh, just release what no long no longer serves, uh, you know the banking system and all that. That so if we do that within ourselves, I think that really helps to to allow that to manifest in our outside world. And could I add something to that there? For sure. Yeah. You know, as long as we're following like the laws of nature and the universe and following our highest destiny we're supported in each and every moment by the universe now how do you do that how can you tell what can people do to do that um, how do they know when they're not maybe oh yeah. uh, it's well you got to follow your heart and your instinct but uh, as a general observation i find the things i'm supposed to do it's it happens of ease and grace it's effortless when i'm not supposed to do something or if the timing's off it's just always roadblocks thrown in the way distractions so stuff for like that. somebody sunshine for somebody who might be married and is working full-time and has a mortgage to pay and has a couple of kids and um how can they make that real for themselves how can they do yeah, that that's a tough Any one ideas? There. that's that's part of the uh trap i guess yeah keep us busy and distracted you know you go to your job 40 hours a week you know mm. you're married you have a few kids and you really have no time to figure things out but it's uh, not too late for those oh, people it's never too late uh yeah, that's a hard question you just got to follow your inner guidance like uh like we've third dimension for those who have chosen like uh, completely let go of it like mm -hmm. the earth is in the fourth dimension mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a lot of us now are experiencing the fourth dimension most of the time and things are just going to be so ch challenging and so painful to hold on to you have no choice but to let go you know so it's going to come to that point like experiencing polarity to the max so when you talk about a lot of um you talk about the shock and the awe and about the systems breaking down that's probably going to have a huge effect on people like we were just talking about, those, those couples who are married with mortgages. I mean, if all of a sudden the banking systems collapse and money is worthless, then how do you pay a mortgage? What is a mortgage? Does it cease to exist? Maybe that's how it will happen with people who are you know, living that very 3D matrix, I guess, living in the matrix life. Yeah, well, if the system collapses, I feel it'll bring people together. I think they're actually propping it up because they understand, like, mm. if That's everything does crumble, it's, you know, it, like, it makes everybody equal and, and you know, and come together. I mean, can you yeah. imagine? Yeah. Think about it. If the, if the, if the banking... That? Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah. I was going to say that if money is worthless and if, if we're kind of locked into this mortgage, then it shows that having each other is more important than having possessions you know, as a basic thing. And whatever the bankers or, you know, whatever these people say to us who have these debts and, and, and mortgages, I don't know how that would play out. But the important thing is to, you know, to be grateful for what we have. And if something does happen and if, you know, we are all, I don't know, forced to, like, leave our houses and come together, you know, no matter what happens, like, at least that way, if we can relate to each other rather than to, you know, start bickering or panic, you know, so somehow there, there's going to be a way to hold the, the love and just to, uh, you know, just see what we do have. And, you know, do we really need money? Like, I think a lot of people agree that they would rather live without it, 
you know, to a certain extent. Yeah. So. Well, we don't need money. No. I understand that. We just need oh. vacations. Oh. Well, again, a, a, again, Philip Hoffman's <laughs> comment comes up again when he s when he said, you know, that I was much happier when I had less. I was more free when I had nothing. You know, he talked about that, and he, mm -hmm. he said, you know, when I um, lived in a um, he his words shithole of an apartment, and I had to go to a payphone. He so said I was much happier. Have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> You're making more work for me for crying out loud. When you, when you have less stuff, there is nothing to worry about. That's what about, he said. That's protect. basically yeah. what he was yeah. saying. That's what he was saying. And you know, think about it. If the, if the bank, if the banking system collapses, and you have Bill Gates with the last dollar, or a farmer with the apple, what has more value? Thank you. Yeah, right? Mother Nature. At the end of the day, you got to eat, but the money means nothing, right? So yeah. kind of interesting. So, so okay, so you guys so are going to do this. Uh, what are you doing? A series of healing events. Throughout the city? Do you have anything like planned right now? Uh, we have a lot of ideas, but nothing firmed up. But we're looking to do something possibly at the uh, Village Healing Center on Roncesvalles around mm -hmm. the end of the month. Uh, oh, you talked about that. Yeah, uh, it's it's not 100% confirmed yet, but um, uh, they used to offer uh, Reiki outreach. So it's just uh, a matter of us carrying carrying it on um, with the, the woman who works in the Village Healing Arts. Um, and basically, so it's it's at the Emmanuel Park Church next door. So they have, um, I guess it's like a, a meal offered on Sunday, the fourth Sunday of every month. So basically, besides the dinner and the the you know coming together as a group uh, up on the on the podium or kind of sectioned off is like an area to give uh, mini Reiki sessions mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. In um, you know they might be in high risk. Uh, type of uh, living environment so and a lot of people were coming back uh, f just for the Reiki besides the dinner uh, they were they nice, loved it and, nice. and they saw a decrease in stress um, you know maybe less physical pain so that's just one I one uh, possibility and that's monthly and that would be indoors you know what <laughs> it just made me it, you know just popped into my head is last week we interviewed um, the modern knowledge tour Right, these guys are going on a tour across Canada, 11 cities, I think, and they're talking about truth and they're bringing out truth about whatever the systems and UFOs and that kind of thing. <laughs> I thought, you know what? You guys should have like a healing road show. They basically yeah. have a modern knowledge road show, is what, what it is, the truth road show. You guys should think about doing that and bringing it to um, small places. I, you know, I don't think you have as much that much equipment. I don't know. That might be something for you guys to consider to go to rural communities and bring it to them. Actually, uh, I know. sort of planned some stuff like that, but that's for down the road. Okay. Uh, I, I created something called a big picture. I just wrote everything on a piece of paper and got stuff like Ottawa, Montreal. Uh, London, looking to do road trips. So, yeah, yeah, uh, that would be. Like I mean, what are these healing road trips? Well, you know, yeah. groups connecting of other groups, but before you can. For it to work fully, you got to complete your own stuff. Yeah. You know, get you, you get everything together, and then you collect, you know, connect with other complete groups, and that's when everything goes to a new level. Yes. You know, the collective journey. So we're looking to do a lot of stuff like that. I got a lot of ideas, just, <laughs> just to get them out there and implement yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. Practicality. Yeah. 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 Laura, are you going to go on that tour too? Yeah, I'm from Ottawa. Are you? I'm game. Did not know that. Yeah, I need to visit. <laughs> <laughs> what a, what an excuse to go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you just get a, what, a, like a big cube van. You get some equipment donated. Like, because you're, and you don't were you talking about filming much, right? this? Is this what they're doing? No, no. Oh, yeah, um, no, they're not well, actually filming it. Who's that? Those uh, guys? Yeah, they are. They are filming it? Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, then they're filming it too. Maybe the in-between parts of like, okay, we're heading here today, and this is our what our mission is, and let's see what happens. Life is a reality TV show now, right? If you're not filming your life, what? <laughs> Why are you wasting your life? <laughs> Why waste it? Oh my God! Why you know it? what? We're all gonna be born with a video camera. We're all gonna be born with a video camera. Yeah. It's instead of like, know. We're, you know, it's, we're instead of being implemented with those chips. I, okay, I got a I got a crazy question. And you guys, by the way, is there anything we haven't talked about yet yeah. before I ask my crazy question? Because I want to talk about what you guys want to talk about. But I, I want to hear your crazy question first. <laughs> it's about transhumanism. Dave, what do you I'm think not, about I'm trans? I'm not sure what you, you know, mean like here. this is like the uh, enhanced reality. It eventually mean maybe genetic modification. Uh, you know, like uh, where in the integration of 
the biological human with technology, Hugh, that sort of thing. What would make you even bring that up? <laughs> oh, these guys are talking about it. Oh, you guys were talking about it? <laughs> you want this one? I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no <thanks. laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, you guys are healing people and stuff like that. But if the idea of the human being actually changes and we become integrated with our technology somehow. What okay, so like he's cloning and stuff? Collective. Huh? Well, like cloning? Maybe even cloning, yeah. To create the perfect human? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. Okay, they did that with monkeys? I did think. they do that with monkeys? I think so. They did. did I didn't did read they get the, the article, perfect monkey? though. What's that? Did they get the perfect monkey? Well, I got yeah, I think it's going to be like a worker monkey. <laughs> Does it Are fly? you serious? I, th I think so. Don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm hearing a lot about drones. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? Well, drones too. Drones oh. could What's be part a drone? of the picture. What is a drone? It's What's like uh, a helicopter a with a camera. Yeah. It's a, it's, it could be a little airplane that is controlled <gasps> from um, an, uh, an operator sitting at a computer can control it. And, f and they could even have a little fly, a little fly, as big as a fly, but it's a little robot that flies and it could come and look at you. And you just think it's a fly, but it's being operated by somebody in Arlington, Texas. <laughs> so, um, so if they <coughs> implant that kind of technology into a human, is that what you're talking about? What transhuman would be that kind of technology, so that yeah. you're literally remote control? Or even person? our personalities downloaded into the internet. Interesting. Oh, I know one thing though. Before to uh, fully work, uh, integrating, I guess, humans with technology, you got to change the energy of technology everything's done now for profit and greed and not for the highest good of the planet and the beings living on it so it needs to be an energy shift before so what i, I would even work what i okay. see you guys doing uh, with the healing is completely the opposite and to prevent what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. because i think what they're doing is honoring the human as sacred and perfect and whole in and of itself mm -hmm. and doesn't need any doctoring and I think what you're talking about is the opposite. And I think they're actually trying to create a consciousness that actually can overcome that kind of... Is that Does true? that make sense? I, yeah. I tend to agree with Sandra on this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm just asking questions. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> My own position on transhumanism is... No, it's, it's so funny that you mention that because <laughs> in the last funny. few days, that's been popping up <laughs> in my radar. What, Trans transhumanism? Transhuman, yeah. It, it's been popping up so much. This is like number three in the last two days. I'm like, what the heck is with that? Why is that coming into my reality? I don't know, but I'm going to play a video after this. Oh, well, there we go. To, um, Everything's about the video he plays in between the interviews. That's going to um, kind of highlight that. But that's a different topic. That's really not what we're talking about. Well, in a way it is. Today. In a way it is because it's the opposite. It really is. It's about not doing that. It's about, you know, if you mm -hmm. are complete and whole, Hugh, yeah. you can't do that. Well, you can't implement anything that would have any effect. Nothing can change you if you are complete and whole of yourself because nothing is more powerful than and the you true human. You wouldn't want to either. Right? Yeah. So no right. technology. And that, I think, counters. I think that's a holistic approach to not allow that lacking, giving up your control. Right. Un you know, unknowingly too, yeah. right? Because you don't know who's controlling. But who would want to give... I wouldn't want to be a remote. I wouldn't volunteer. Mm -hmm. Even if you said, you'll have everything you ever want. Okay, guys. Here's right? This, you know, now you guys, I don't know if you hear about this, but you hear about like, oh, they're going to chip everybody. Like the, that's a big plan. They're going to like put the a FEMA micro... FEMA stamps. That you're the FEMA, about. yeah. They're just oh. going to microchip everybody. Right? You guys heard about that, Laura? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, from your perspective as healers, what, what, what do you have to say about that? I don't think it's a nice idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. Well, it's a, it's a tracking system. Yeah. Right. Of course. And with the uh, what was it with the helicopter with the camera? The drone. The drone. They yeah. were s there was one uh, article mentioning that they could put them in ca uh, classrooms to monitor kids uh, in their learning environment and stuff. But so the wow. the whole point of it is that a lot of this stuff and. A lot of us, we don't need to be changed. We don't. Exactly. We're, we're, we're already wonderful the way we are. So, um, you know, because with the GM foods, it, you know, it's pretty much been proven that the, the food affects us and it changes us, but not in the ways that, uh, you know, those companies are thinking that it would change. They're, they're not thinking about how it's going to affect us later. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have sensitivities and allergies to this food. So a tomato is a tomato. Like it doesn't need an upgrade, you know. Exactly. I don't know. I think I'll be happier if it glows in the dark. 
<laughs> so You're going to start to glow in the dark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean? Yeah. No, of course I'm just joking. But, um, so, but on the one hand, you guys are talking about, Dave, because you mentioned, you know, you're living in the fourth dimension. I'm not sure what no, that means. No, he said Earth is. Well, Earth. our planet's in the fourth dimension, and a lot of us have chosen to shift with her. Yeah. But a lot of people are holding on to okay. the 3D polarities of sure. fear okay. and separation. So yeah. there you are, and you're, you're shifting into that. But on the other hand, we talked about this stuff, like the threat of potentially being microchipped, like a global police state, and that kind of thing, right, is... is I mean, it's bad news, right? No good when you or hear bad. about it, right? It's a program of ego, right? The program of ego only knows one thing, you know, control, mm -hmm. manipulate, and it's not gonna, it's going to keep going. It's not yeah. going to stop. It's either, we're either going to shift or everything's going to be destroyed in this planet. So now, doesn't like, that sound like Atlantis? It's pretty simple. Does that know? sound like the return of Atlantis once again? Isn't that how Atlantis fell or so we... Hmm. Oh, you you man, know I'm, more about that. I'm really confused. I'll tell you, because I, I watched this video last night. On, well, that's uh, why he's confused. He watched I, a video my whole, last night. My whole night. cosmology <laughs> is being shaken up, but it was about uh, this. Uh, it was about what are called archons. Yeah, the archon program, yeah. The yeah. archons, which are the, um, which the ones were mentioned. They took down Atlantis there. Well, oh yeah, they're, yeah. they're yeah. Okay. from the Nag Hammadi Library. That's where they're, I, I read about them like 15, 20 years ago. I, I can see yeah. them too. Four dimensional are, beings. Are they good guys or bad guys? They're not good. Yeah. So these archons <laughs> are like, the mind. Uh, and, and yeah. now uh, the, the fellow was talking about, he's saying, you know, fundamentally we have to overthrow the God of Abraham, which is our entire programming, mm -hmm. right? Well, not necessarily overthrow, more like transcend it and transmute it. Every time you fight something, you just make it stronger. More you resilient. become the fight. When well, yeah. fight, essentially fight, what he was saying, the, the truth is the truth, whatever the truth is. Right? Mm -hmm. So okay. either we buy into the truth or we buy into so, something else. So you know what then? What this is making me think of is, is, is it possible we are at that whole Atlantis crossing um, where you know, we can either fall with technology or rise well, it's not the technology. with consciousness. Technology can be used for good too. It's just but it's not the, being. No, for the most part, no. Except right. for those GoPros. Those are really cool. It's all cameras. consciousness. Once we shift to love, everything else is going to fix automatically. And you know what? You can think it's of consciousness as technology too. Consciousness technology, really. If you want to kind of compare with technology, you can say consciousness technology, really. Because we are a program too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's a program, right? Yep. So really, you could just say it's, it's technology called consciousness as opposed to digital or it's computer. Just, it's what I see is with the technology is there's like this monitoring uh, and this lack of trust that you know, we've given you the internet, but uh, mostly mm. in the U.S., they're monitoring usage, and they're you know, people are being arrested in their homes for no reason, you know, because they're maybe more conscious and they're you know, they're they're attending protests and they're speaking out about the truth and not uh, you know, all sorts of things. But um, and what's being suppressed is our innate power that we that we have, and power is kind of a funny word, but you know, uh, with meditation and turning inwards, there's a lot of, uh, you know, abilities that we can tune into, mm -hmm. create your own video mm -hmm. game in mm -hmm. your in your mind, and then you don't have wires and use electricity and, but, okay, you know, on. like you can, but you can, whatever you can imagine, you can create in your reality. We're, really? we're, we're creator God and goddesses. Are we? Because Absolutely. He, okay, but, but there you are at home, okay? Yeah, things are bad in the States because they got the three different colored FEMA stickers. But here, I mean, they just announced last week they're integrating, sharing inf border information at the border with U.S. Homeland Security. Like, sorry, I don't like that, right? No, Our government's running amok. We're just a few years behind the States. Yeah. And so you're at home creating your own video game in your mind, <laughs> Laura. But meanwhile, the police state marches on and... You know, they're ma monitoring our internet traffic and everything else. Yeah, you gotta yeah. remember though, nothing's good or bad. Everything's done for the highest good here. It's like. Uh, it's for you to make a like, choice. Like I, th I thank Obama. I thank uh, Monsanto. It's like they're doing this stuff in plain sight. They're not even trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna keep doing it until either people wake up or everything falls apart. It's pretty simple. Just a program of ego. And it's gonna keep running and running. All right. But at, at least if you're at home and you're choosing yeah. the vibration you're emitting, uh, that's I think that will help. Besides what else you're going to do with the rest of, of your day, you know, there's a balance. But um, speaking of, there's an event next Friday on Valentine's 
that's it's called uh, World uh, Global Sound Healing Day. So I don't know if you really? guys have heard. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I wonder if our next guest, Michael no. Moon, knows about that. He's a sound yeah. Healer. Do you know about Michael? Just a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, he's got to know about this. Yeah. But they're going to sound, uh, they're encouraging uh, groups to get together or even if you're by yourself at noon, uh, by your time zone or whatever time you can, just to um, emit the sound awe for about five minutes. Wow. And it's going to create a, a beautiful uh, vib vibratory wave across the world. Now, and is that, does it matter what noon time, what time zone that noon is in? Or like, do I do... 12 o'clock Eastern, even if it's somebody yeah. else is in Pacific doing at 12 o'clock there? Yes. That's okay? So basically kind of for the full day or half a day before and half a day after, it, people will be doing this. So okay. it's going to be almost for a full, say, 24, 24 hours. hours. Wow. But yeah. That's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Okay. You're going to yeah. do that, Hugh. Okay. Okay. I'm all about that. Kind of like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, and where? Uh, so, you don't have anything uh, in terms of the actual schedule of your events, but do you have a website? I mean, the, is there the Reiki Mondays? Yeah, I do yeah. Reiki Mondays at uh, House of Energy every second Monday. Every Monday, there'll be a healer there from Mind, Body, Soul. Oh, where is that? It's at uh, Augusta, just south of uh, Kensington. It's in Kensington Market. Oh, you have Augusta, a in the South End. Oh, and okay. uh, okay. yeah, it's, it runs from two to six every Monday, and there's All a right. group meditation afterwards. Okay. Beautiful. And anything Beautiful. else you should let us know about? Laura, do you have anything Won't you talk well, about what you do, Laura, before we end the interview here? <laughs> oh, well, um, well, I'm part of Mind, Body, Soul Healing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, do, I do have a day job as well, but um, basically uh, I, ass I assist in uh, the Reiki. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to be part of the Reiki outreach, and, which is going to be the uh, fourth Sunday of the month, so that's uh, February 23rd. And uh, I offer Zenith Omega sessions as well. Okay. Is, now, what's your day job? Is that your day job? No, that's... Uh, your day job's your 3D job? Is that what we mean by day job? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's a not-for-profit, though. It's a, it's a great company oh, to work for. Good. What's Zenith Omega? <laughs> Zenith Omega is an energy management system. So it works to remove blocks, energy blocks, uh, emotional, physical. Does it really work? I'll let yeah. you know I'm going for a session after yeah. this. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good. part of... We're Very excited. Yeah. Have you had a vortex healing from Sunshine? I have. We're going to do another yeah. one of so those later, too. In order to support each other, we're, it's good for the nine of us to do energy exchanges as well. Of so, course, that makes sense. You know, and then we know more about what all of us offer, yeah. and we can learn more. Um, and then it helps us to, to clear anything that we may be manifesting. And merge right. together as a collective more, too. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, guys. Great. Uh, now, is web websites? for people that want to get and stay in touch with you guys? Okay, uh, just, uh, I'll start first, I guess. Uh, website is mindbodysoulhealing.ca. Uh, I can be reached by email at sunshinedave at mindbodysoulhealing.ca. On Twitter, sunshinedave.to. Is that hashtag? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> at sunshinedave.to. Okay. And uh, YouTube channel is sunshinedave2012. 2012. And you can find me on Facebook, too. Okay, and okay. we're planning to do a lot of events this year, a lot of events outdoor in parks once the weather is warm, a lot of indoor events Hope east we and west of the city. We're yeah. going to rock this planet in the next dimension here, cool. the golden age, baby. So Looking those drones ain't got nothing on sunshine. <laughs> and Laura, how about you? Do you have websites or contact info? I'm uh, doing the, the Twitter page for Mind, Body, Soul Healing, okay. which is Mind, Body, Soul, T-O. Yeah. Okay. At Mind, Body, Soul, T-O. So, yeah. T-O. Or dot T-O. Okay. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great to have you guys on. Thank Good you. Luck, Thank you guys. Guys. Love so to have you back. We could have been talking all day about yes, this. We Absolutely. Got into some crazier topics. Yeah. Next time. We Next didn't time. talk about the aliens. Oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, I was uh, just going to play, get into Michael Moon's music, but I do have a video I want to play because we're talking about the transhumanism thing. This is the Archon X Prize video. We'll, and Sounds we'll like an Xbox game or something. And then we'll get on Michael Moon and uh, Liquid Lunch will continue. Transhumans. None of us lasts forever. It's part of who we are. And it's our ultimate struggle to live longer than we do. 
We've raised life expectancy due to better nutrition and the conquest of infectious disease. Yet the machine we call the human body still reaches the end of its average working lifespan by the time we reach our late 70s. But there are those for whom aging happens slowly and who seem more resistant to the diseases and afflictions that plague so many. In the United States, out of every 4,000 people, one will live to 100 years of age. Many of these centenarians redefine the limits of a healthy human lifespan. People like Irving Kahn, who at 104 years old, continues to command the consulting business he founded years ago, managing over $700 million in assets. Or Irma Daniel, who at 103, continues her daily exercise routines and enjoys life out with her friends. So, with other words, I better buy a computer. Better buy a computer. How have they, of all people, lived to 100 years of age? Do the oldest of the elderly have a special trick that will help all of us live healthy lives? The important thing is to keep that brain going, you see. You've got to eat your vegetables, you've got to eat your vegetables. <laughs> I don't think so, I think it's the genes. My mother and my father had good genes. Genes. The key to long and healthy life is in their genetic makeup. And this secret they carry around inside them, in every cell of their body. If only we could read and decipher that message. What if we could identify the genes for long, healthy life and natural resistance to disease? Then use that knowledge to achieve radical breakthroughs in healthcare and more predictive and personalized medicine. Why can't everyone live a longer and healthier life? The Archon Genomics X Prize presented by Express Scripts will open the door to unlocking this genetic heritage. A competition to award $10 million to the first team that can sequence 100 genomes in 30 days. And not just any genomes, but those belonging to people that have lived to 100 years of age and more. In the year 2000, the human genome was sequenced. It cost $100 million and we took an entire year. Our goal is to bring that price down dramatically and make it possible for all of us to benefit. That's what X Prizes do. The Archon Genomics X Prize will spark a technological breakthrough that will generate the world's first and most complete medical grade genomic record of healthy centenarians, allowing us at last to reveal the cellular secrets behind exceptionally long and healthy life and spur medical breakthroughs that will help us live long and active lives. Not just for one in 4,000, but someday for all of us. The Archon Genomics X Prize, presented by Express Scripts, ushering in a new era of personalized and predictive medicine for longer and healthier lives for everyone.
stars are for me, for me, for me. The clouds are for me, embracing the earth. We are part of a circle, circle, circle of the Show, and that was a track from Michael Moon. And Michael, you're welcome back to the show. Thank you. So now... Ask about the sound healing thing. The world meditation <laughs> thing. Do you oh. know about that? I'll ask. They were Because they were mentioning it to our last guest, yes. Laura and uh, Dave. Do you Did know, you about, know that? about that? Which? It was like I mean, a world sound oh healing yeah, yeah. day. Yeah. And I thought, yes. oh. you must know about that. I do. For some, are you going to be involved in it? Uh, uh, yeah, personally. Yeah. Are you going to be anywhere anywhere special, or are you just going to be doing it at home? Uh, usually in the forest. Oh, even, even I guess, with the snow and everything? Of course. Like true Canadian. Yeah. Nature oh. is beautiful every time of year. I mean, that's what hats and gloves and Things sweaters are for. Are for. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's use that as a little bit of, of a segue, Michael, because uh, sound healing. I mean, you're releasing this... Uh, uh, what is it a triple uh, CD? A triple CD release, set? yes. And and it's all about healing, yes. isn't it? Healing the planet. C can you, you know, tell us a little bit about it? Um, yeah, well, healing the planet, it's more healing our relationship to the planet. You know, the planet mm -hmm. will heal itself, and if we we don't heal our relationship to it, healing it will be like our body purging cancer. It'll just kind of purge us. I mean, we're, if we are so much in disharmony so healing our relationship to the planet healing our creating our har more harmony between humanity and the planet and that starts at a personal level with each individual mm -hmm. um, mm. so the first cd i started working on was a meditation cd uh, with the idea of creating the vibration of the earth that we could surround ourselves in in sound healing uh, through um, harmonic resonance entrainment different principles you can use sound to change shift our consciousness to a, a different vibrations depending on what you, you put in the music so in this case uh, wanting to put the resonance of the earth into music and I'm not just talking about 7.8 Hertz mm -hmm. I'm talking about a, a more complex type of uh, r resonance frequencies that uh, would relate to earth and and so one can just put on headphones, just listen to this music and go into that experience, that feeling of uh, the way it would feel like if you're just alone in nature, uh, which unfortunately we don't have much of these days in mm. our most, our city dwellers anyways. 
And I know how much I've needed that for my own personal healing. And if mm -hmm. I don't get that, my body breaks down very quickly. And so I'm very conscious of that. And so this was the initial idea of, of the CD, and that was the first one. <laughs> okay, so I mean, i got a million questions already. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we talk about this every time you come on the show, but you mentioned seven point what hertz? Yes, seven point eight hertz. What is that, the Schumann resonance? Schumann resonance, yeah. And is that, no, I, because isn't that changing? Isn't the Schumann resonance isn't it close to 13 changing now? or moving up? It's, it's, uh, it's not exactly documented. People talk about it changing. Um, and first of all, I've got to say, talk about what the Schumann resonance is. Good idea. It is um, the cavity of the atmosphere. So between the planet's surface and the top of the atmosphere is, is a certain amount of space. I don't remember the number of miles. But it's a thin shield around the Earth. And in that, there's a certain frequency that would resonate with that. So mm -hmm. the actual sound wave would go up and down between the atmosphere, top of the atmosphere, and the surface of the Earth. And so when you have thousands of lightning strikes a second all over the planet, there's this energy, this vibration that's constantly put into this field, and it resonates that um, cavity. And it creates a 7.8 hertz resonance that all living creatures on the earth are constantly in. So this the is only the sound. Way it's a, like it's it's a sound essentially that we are all immersed in all the time. Yes, it's a vibration. It's not one we can hear with our ears, but it's a sound that's sort of below that. Okay. Though th there are ways that we can hear that by doubling it and things like that. But um, it is. That the only way for that frequency to change is if the atmosphere and the Earth change their um, mm. relationship. What I well, there's two things. W what I believe is causing a shift in that frequency is potentially all the man-made frequencies we're adding to, like cell phones, the atmosphere, like cell phones, okay. cell towers. I mean, there's if you could mm. see frequency or if we could hear these frequencies, our, our sen they're there, our, it's just our senses aren't designed to experience them. Mm. So if we could see them, we, we wouldn't see anything else. I mean, it would just, our, our whole vision would be just blurred Bombarded. out by okay. all this. I mean, there's frequencies coming through from natural ones coming from the sun to the unnatural ones that we've created. And they're getting... In the last 15 years, it has increased from a very little to huge amounts. Mm -hmm. So huge. when you say so frequencies, Michael, are yes. you meaning sound frequencies? I mean, no. Sound frequencies are the frequencies we hear. Okay. But there's a whole spectrum of frequencies. Okay. That, that if, if those spec the spectrum of frequencies, w if they were as, as long as the continent, you know, from the east coast to the west coast, it would be like this small little... Um, not even the size of a city, I mean smaller, like a, a mm. very small little f window of frequency that we can actually sense with our senses. Okay. And there's about eight octaves or you know, 12 octaves or so we can hear, okay. so, and okay. then a one octave we can see. Ah. And then the rest is beyond our ability to physically sense. So, okay, but we so do pick it up. Our bodies do experience it, but we just don't see or hear it. Okay. So frequency is sight, it's sound, but it's beyond all that. So, okay, so from what you're saying, um, but we've heard reports. What you're saying is that, no, that Schumann frequency, there's no, well, maybe from Because Greg Braden, Braden uh, talks about a change. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. So, okay, so I guess you're saying it's due to the man-made frequency, I'm not possibly. saying it is. I'm saying that's a possibility. It makes the most sense to me mm. that... If there's a change in the Schumann resonance, unless the atmosphere is getting it's further from the Earth, yeah. um, that, w let's put it this way, without a doubt, all the frequencies we are putting into the atmosphere are affecting us. Just like the Schumann resonance affects us. We know it affects us because when mm -hmm. astronauts go to space and they're outside of that resonance, they get sick unless they actually put that frequency into the spaceships. Oh, mm. wow. They have to put it there in order to, to be healthy. Um, we need that resonance to, 
to survive. Do they Part know of our food, our what is the resonance food. that's outside of that? Um, when you say they have to put that resonance in their ships yes. um, or their rockets, whatever, mm -hmm. um, what is if they? What is it that's if it were, if it's seven point eight that we need? Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it higher or is it lower? That's outside the environment, the atmosphere. Well, it's space. Do you know? There would be all kinds of frequencies from the different stars, from the different sun, but there would be much less. It wouldn't be as strong as mm. a specific frequency as the 7.8 hertz. Okay, I see. Okay. There are infinite frequencies around us, which is why in this CD I don't just put 7.8 hertz. It, it, it's much more complex than that. Okay. You know? And how do you connect to the frequency of nature? It, it's a complex thing. The 7.8 thing is, is the one that has scientific research around it that okay. we know is important, but there's so much more. So, <clears throat> so uh, before we get to your, your CDs and, and how people can use them and the kind of be uh, presumably beneficial <laughs> effect that listening to them might have, um, we're in this, uh, we're experimenting with ourselves, with our environment, with this frequency mm -hmm. situation that we've created over the last hundred years years or so yep. um, like where do you think we're headed with all this is are, are we gonna self-destruct are we gonna learn something from this so, I mean, or, or maybe we're gonna morph into some <coughs> other form to match that frequency yes yes and yes <laughs> okay <laughs> um, I think what's most important is we recognize the importance of frequency okay. uh, and so many things are discovering this or, or teaching this from different uh, viewpoints from homeopathy, it's frequency medicine. Um, hmm. Sound healing of horses is, is frequency medicine. Energy work, frequency medicine. Um, there are so many studies from around the world that point to how powerful frequency affects us. Because we are beings of frequency. And we're so caught up in the physical idea of mm. matter that we, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. forget that. And if we just everybody got together and we started putting all this research together, you start seeing a, a pattern. You start seeing how important frequency is. And I think that's the first step. And as soon as we understand that, all it takes is shifting the cell phone tower frequencies to something that's healthy. If it's we're really conscious about it. It's really that easy. Theoretically. Theor okay. There are people that do it. Actually, there are. Uh, I think we've had some of them on the show here. Huh? What, what is that? Well, we had... Um, uh, well, Dr. Ibrahim Karim. Yes, he said Karim was the first one I was thinking of, yes. Yeah, and we've had him on the show, and he's uh, fixing Montreal right now, apparently. Oh, great. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he lives in Montreal, he moved to Montreal. He and talked about doing Toronto, but I don't know if that ever happened. Well, yet. there was talk about doing it, <laughs> and uh, of course he came and spoke at the Dowsers. Yes. And, um, uh, but I think he just... Gave up on he us. He likes Montreal better. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a better frequency to start with. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh. Uh, wow. But, uh, yeah, no, what he said really was, he said it's, he can't do it. What he needs is a community that's behind him to do it. Really, the community has yes. to do it. Well, there's, you know, here we start bordering on, I mean, this is a big topic and a whole separate topic by itself, but um, the military uses frequency to, to uh, as a weapon, too. So y how much of this is thought out? How much of it is just arbitrary? The, f the fact is we need to be aware of it. And we, and we need to then, uh, once we become aware of it, we have the ability to create technologies that can use this positively. But it sounds to me like you're the, if the military is using it, but not for beneficial reasons. Is that what you're saying? No, They're they just want to help people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so going to get into all that. No, but so what you're saying is we already know about it then. We're already aware of yes. it, and we're already aware of how to use it. We're just not using it in a way that's necessarily beneficial. Yes. Is that what you're okay. Yeah. So, so Well, most people we don't even recognize it. it. Okay, so, but there is a group that does understand it, is what you're saying, that awareness oh, yeah. is there. Yeah. It's 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 there, and okay. I mean I'm I'm using it in my way in, in in sound and in these CDs, and I know it works in this small level. If I little me can do it, <laughs> think of what people that so really how, understand can how do. How did you learn about this, Michael? This I mean this is not something you can go to school to learn, is it? No, <laughs> uh, it started with getting sick. 
Okay, that's um, often the way these things start. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got very ill. I, I, I dropped out of the world for, for quite a while. How old were you? Were you very young? I was 20. Okay. Um, and I, I think I got sick a little earlier, but that's when it really collapsed. And so I, I had to figure out what was going on. And in that time, I was starting to hear music it, inside. It, it always come when I was in nature, and it kind of felt like it was coming from behind nature somehow. Hmm. And at one point, I had a very strong voice tell me that I was here to translate that music, to bring it in. So I, I began un trying to understand that. And there's also part of that message was that this was about healing uh, humanity's relationship to the earth somehow. These are just things that came to me. I didn't un know what to do. So I started studying everything I could about sound and healing. Wow. All these esoteric books from the 1800s, from the, the 70s. And they all pretty much said similar things. Um, and, but they, they kind of went to here and then Stop. nobody went further. And I was like, okay, I need to know more. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll never forget the first show where I was, somebody came up to me afterwards and said, wow, I, I was going to leave before you started playing because I had a migraine and I was just coming on and these things usually, if I don't deal with them right away, they'll last for days and something told me to stay and as soon as you started playing, my headache left. And I was like, really? Well, that's what I want to do, but I didn't know I knew how to do it yet. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. And then I started recognizing that intention, the heart, um, and what I'd already learned and understood was, was coming through. And then I started analyzing what was happening, understanding it more deeply, uh, and kind of in my own way, learning direct from spirit how to create uh, sound and frequency to help heal. Uh, wow. So and I kept getting more and more affirmations over the years like that that mm. showed me I was going in the right direction. I mean, I wish I could have a university degree going, you know, Master sound healer, but no, it's just it, doesn't exist, it comes huh? from spirit. I've learned everything I can. I continue trying to learn. I continue teaching and and listening. Nature has been my greatest teacher. Being alone in nature and, and listening, listening to the sounds, and especially you know listening to like guitar players will listen to Jimi Hendrix and try and emulate it. I'll listen to the sound of the river and the crickets and the, the birds and have that inform the music, but also listening behind all that. How does, what's the, the, the Do they feeling? speak to you at all? Do you get messages oh, yeah. from them? I do. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm going off script here, Michael. But, um, <laughs> we don't even have a script. What are you talking I do about? Have, Michael sent me a script, <laughs> but oh. I forgot to print it for the show. Oh. So we're just, oh, I hope oops. we're hitting on all the points it doesn't matter. we want to. Um, it was for you, not for me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the spontaneity, but I mean, this is a fascinating topic, but um, so it, so this new CD set that you've, you're mm -hmm. coming out with now, like if somebody listens to it, what might they expect in terms of... Besides healing their migraine, which is wonderful, because yeah. <laughs> I get weather headaches. In fact, I have a headache right now what? because I know it's going to snow. You do? Right? It's, it's going to snow tonight and tomorrow. So I you're in tune with headaches. nature. Yeah, yeah, and I get those. I, I usually people often use me as the the weather person because I can feel it. I can I can feel the exact type of headache it is. I can feel my head head filling up. So, oh my God, if I could listen, and not nothing works like in terms of medication. Mm -hmm. We'll have to try it. None of that stuff works. So yeah. So if you can cure migraines, I'm sure you can get <laughs> that going. Well. Yeah, I'm just curious, what are some of the other effects that people might experience uh, well, listening to the music? Answering both of those, I don't, it's not a prescription. It's not, this is going to cure that. It's because for me, healing, for me, it's, it's my company is called the Temple of Sound for a reason. I, mm. The music creates sacred space. So you put it on and it creates a space, a vibration, a frequency field, and that your body can relax into a natural vibration and heal itself. And so if you're ready to heal, all you need to do is create that a, a healthy vibration around you and, and go into that space and your body will naturally heal itself. Our body naturally heals. We cut itself, it heals. We mm -hmm. don't do That's anything. That's true. That's true. You know, but you can do things to help it. 
do some Reiki on it, you dress the wound, you know. But the body does the healing. I don't do the healing. No healer does the healing. Um, but what you can expect is that uh, each, part, each one of these three CDs does a different part. The, 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 the Earth Alignment CD is about aligning to the frequency of the Earth, and that is a very healthy, natural place where our natural healing can occur much easier than our disjointed, disconnected reality in the city where we just don't connect to nature and we're connected to vibrations with our cell phones, et cetera, that are unhealthy. So this is, when we're in that environment, you can have this on your cell phone and you can add a, a nice vibration. Wow. Um, the next CD is a CD of, of songs and chants that are designed to help inspire you to connect to the earth. Um, one can sing in mm. circle and, and, and do these chants together the cycles of life, the elements, uh, as well as inspirational song that just on an emotional level connects us. It's very important that we feel a connection to the earth. That we, there, It's real. I mean, even a single plant, it's been proven that, uh, the, the per, I think it's the person that developed lie detectors uh, was given a plant and he just thought, what, what happens if I put this equipment on a plant? And he found that if he thought of hurting the plant, the plant would freak out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he, he could do it from across the world and it would still. The plants, they don't have consciousness like we do, but they have plant consciousness mm -hmm. and they react. They, mm -hmm. they interact with us. So if a plant can do it, the whole planet does. So for me, mm -hmm. this is like, they're love songs to the earth. Just wow. like you'd sing love songs to a lover and you'd, this is love songs for the earth. And wow, so that, that it beautiful. creates a heart connection to the earth. And wow. then the third is based on um, uh, a healing meditation called Ho'oponopono. Ah. Which you know what that is. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, so, so powerful. It used to be just a little three-minute song on the Earth Song CD, um, but people loved it so much, and my, my fans have started calling it the tissue song, because every time we do oh. it, they start crying. <laughs> so, um, And people kept asking for it longer, longer. It's become an hour-long symphony of this wow. chant that just keeps repeating. You can put it on the background. It creates this vibration. Is it the four vibration. words? Uh, the four sentences? Uh, my uh -huh. version of it goes like this. So sorry, forgive me. With all my heart, I love you. I thank you. Wow. And Beautiful. So the idea is to sing this for the earth, to sing it to our food, to sing it to our bodies. You know, we have such an impact on the earth. No matter how hard we try, we do. And so to just be aware of it and to, to this is a very powerful meditation that is healed the, the, the ancient Hawaiians used this in the, their village healing mm. so if somebody was uh, causing trouble they would bring them in and they would just say these words to them as a community and yeah. the village would say it to themselves they wouldn't just blame the other person they'd take it on as okay something's wrong in the community that we've done to create this wow. and so wow. it's not like so you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it for the other. And so the idea was to do this for the earth. And how powerful could that be? Now, I, so I remember I heard a story that Dr. Emoto, right, who we all Matthew know. Matthew from Water? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he did that. Oh, yeah? He did uh, Ho'oponopono? Yeah. Okay. To Fukushima. Oh, okay. And That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm paranoid about Fukushima. A lot mm. of people are. Mm. And I'm just it's curious. It's very real. It's a very real. It still is. Yeah. I mean... And when you think about, um, y what you're doing with, with these, um, with this music as a, a love song to earth and as a healing music, I mean, can we heal something like Fukushima with music? That's my little offering. It'll do something, <laughs> whether it can heal the full extent, I'm not going to say that by any means, um, but it's extremely important that we're aware of how intense our impact is from Fukushima to 
I mean, the, the ice caps are melting at an unprecedented space. At I heard they're coming back this winter, though. Well, maybe maybe further south they are. <laughs> <laughs> they're but, moving. But uh, mm -hmm. you know that it's that's actually part of, a part of it. I mean, I'm not even getting to debates about it. There's, to me, there's no debate whether climate change, heating up, whatever. I mean, the fact is, we have an impact. What that impact is, I don't care what words you put on it. We have an impact, and we need to acknowledge that impact in order to reharmonize with the mm -hmm. earth. And so Fukushima is a massive impact on, on so many creatures, including us, and it continues to go on and will continue to go on for a long time. We have to, we can't just go into the Pacific and take the radiation out physically. So if everything is vibration and radiation is definitely vibration, then any positive vibration we can put towards that will help and the simple act of blessing food i mean it it comes down to us from our ancestors we bless our food we've kind of lost that in the west a bit mm. but it's it's just that we're honoring where the food came from we're giving thanks it changes the vibration just the simple honoring the thanks the acknowledging our impact being thankful for the gift you know when when it, a native person killed a deer, they honored it. They, mm. they, they, there was a connection to it. We just slaughter animals like completely unconsciously. And there's a vibration to that that's negative. It's not that we shouldn't eat meat per se, it's just the way we do it. Mm. You know, so um, I guess my passion has always been to kind of reharmonize ourselves back to the earth maybe it's because it's what i needed to do <laughs> for my own healing but that's at least my little part in the big picture okay so now the cd we're, we're previewing it for the first time here on the show yeah, today is, right wow. which is yeah. awesome thank it's you it's not even quite finished it's thank you you know 95 percent there and you've got the first uh the first copies <laughs> So I'm just, you know, for people that are watching this, and they may be watching it in the future because it, you know, because <laughs> it could be on YouTube, but yeah. w uh, when and how can people, if they want to uh, get a copy of it, uh, how can they do that? Well, my website's always the first, the hub for all my music, which is thetempleofsound.com. Thetempleofsound.com, and that's my, what I, what I do with the music is create this temple of sound. Uh, and you can you take with you. So, and of course, it'll be on iTunes. It'll be on all the uh, CD Baby. And, and I'm just curious, Michael, because you know, uh, uh, it does it make a difference? We're talking about frequency. We're talking about music that you're putting out there in the world. Does it make a difference whether it's like analog on vinyl versus digital MP3 or WAV files? Does any of that matter? Yes and no. Okay. Um, Here's an answer. <laughs> Absolutely, it matters. Analog music is better. It takes the whole frequency directly. Uh, mm. All my CDs up until this point have been done analog, but they end up digital in mm -hmm. the end. Yeah. Digital is the way we do things. <coughs> and I find to record digitally, I need to do it differently. It's harder to get the vibration in. The easiest translation of vibration is live. Mm -hmm. I'm there with my instruments, my guitar, crystal bowls, and gongs, and bells, and vibraphones, and all these things, and pure, direct translation of energy. I find if I'm playing a synthesizer, very hard to connect that energy. Um, I do Why use them from that? time to time. It's, it's disconnected, so oh, okay. Okay. you're it's pressing cool, a button. Right? that then plays something that was recorded by somebody in a lab before. Okay. Whereas you're hitting a note in that moment and it's resonating vibration out. It's it's in, on all the upper harmonics, you've got all the, um, the feelings, all the, there's, there's energy, there's frequency, inf information carried on the higher frequencies that are often cut off in the digital realm. So, Yes, and purely analog, especially live, is best. And there's an energy at a live performance that you, 
you mm -hmm. just record that, mm -hmm. and it sort of it doesn't quite hold the power. Mm -hmm. You know, you can really feel that. I used to go to Grateful Dead shows, and you know, there's like this passion that Deadheads would have, and yes. they'd go to every show, and they talk about the energy, and then they play tapes for people that didn't go, and they'd be like, huh, "What the hell is this? This is like this band isn't that great." Yeah. <laughs> but it's the energy. They were yeah. masters of energy. Yeah. They're, and and it's that human element, right? It's like uh, the individual players, the personality of the musician comes, I think, out in the performance. And absolutely. And you don't have to be, be as aware that most master musicians are sound healers, whether they know it or not. Yeah. That's why people connect to them musically. I'm yeah, not talking about pop stars, so. but I'm talking about the um, musicians that, that really get into it and they touch people. Uh, you know, and I love, you know, the... Pink Floyd and Jimi Hendrix and the Grateful Dead and Simon and Garfunkel and Beatles, all these people, like, they're, they're masters at moving energy and, and touching people. Um, then you get to the digital realm, and it has its benefits and it has its problems. But yes, you can ultimately put energy through the digital media. It's just different, and you have to be aware of it. And I use other ways and tricks to kind of, um, you know, for instance, I use all real instruments, mm -hmm. and, and that really helps, mm -hmm. and, and I play it in real time, and I um, interact, and it's, I, I stay away from synthesizers, except in the new pop stuff I'm doing, <laughs> but that's a whole oh, other story. Well, we'll <laughs> have, have some to dance be back stuff coming up. for that, I'd love <laughs> yes. to hear some of that. I just want to ask you, though, I, I, I know we've probably had this conversation before, but when you tune your A, just because yeah. of controversy, what should A be? Should it be 440 hertz or <sighs> 432 or 444? There's no should. Yeah. Why all these rules? You know, it, frequency is this vast spectrum, and we're arguing between, like, these tiny hairs of frequency. Um, in most of my CDs, I'm not even worried about what... Uh, some of it's A440, some of it's A432, some of it's A4, who knows what. I mean... Hmm. You know, because I'm taking stuff, I'm slowing it down, I'm doing all kinds of stuff to it. I, I'm playing ancient instruments that are tuned to who knows what they are, mm -hmm. and then I'll tune the other things to that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not worried about a specific tuning. I've done my, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've done a lot of research on it. I can't find any definitive evidence. I like the idea of this A432 thing, but I've not found any evidence that it truly is what they say it is. Uh, a lot of the background stuff that people into it talk about, like, oh, A440 stems from Nazi Germany and stuff, is just not true. I mean, A440 is a North American phenomenon. Europe still uses A442, A444. Um, and Len Horowitz is now advocating, I think, A444 or something like that. It, yeah, I mean... Whether it's a marketing tool, or my music's different because it's this, or I don't know. I, I I stay out of the battle line of it. Yeah. I I've done my research. I would love somebody to sit down with me and convince me. I've listened to music done in A four thirty two. I've listened to stuff that people have done in one and one and one and the other, and I don't vibrationally. I don't feel a difference. I feel. Yeah, it's a little bit lower and slower, <laughs> yeah. so it's a little more relaxing. Yeah. But that's just the nature of slowing down music in order to do that. So um, mm. I stay out of the argument. I, I think when true sound healing, you want to... If I'm doing a healing session for an individual, I'll be tuning into their frequency, whatever that is, and connecting to it and then shifting it into something that feels right for them. So all the stuff about C being the root chakra and it doesn't it's it's not to me it's not real. It's an arbitrary mm. thing that people put on stuff to try and teach something that can't be boxed like that. Mm -hmm. And I think the boxes are something we need to leave behind. Each individual is different. Um, there are some definite standards. People that talk about A four thirty two relate it to the 7.8 hertz, but then they're averaging that out to 8 hertz. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, okay, well, 8 hertz is the frequency of the earth. And then mm. that then 
translates to A432. So that's not even that accurate. Mm. Um, you know, and then we say that maybe that frequency of eight, 7.8 hertz is shifting anyway. Um, and that, again, I don't know whether that's a man-made phenomenon or a natural one, but um, we, we still need that frequency to be healthy. Um, mm. So I, I really believe in listening to the individual and to nature in this case as a, an individual and see what they want and what comes through and uh, trusting something out of the box mm -hmm. that doesn't fit and seeing what what happens and, f and feeling it. You can feel with whether music is healthy for you or not. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. And, mm -hmm. but it's important to, 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 to start listening deeper and, and you'll know, you can, you can feel it. So uh, let's, uh, let's feel some of that music right now. Uh, as we go out, we're gonna play another track from sure. the triple CD. Which, which track are we gonna hear now as we go out? Um, I'm not sure, but we, we could try uh, Heart's Beat is One, uh, is one that I put on there. Okay. Which is just a sweet song that's, uh, kind of it describes the sort of a bit of the process for people. Okay. All right. Well, great to have you on, Michael, as always, Thank and you. Uh, congratulations on this. Um, and and I look, for I'm looking forward to hearing the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And um, of course, people can get, get rid more. of my headache. Yes. <laughs> we'll uh, <laughs> there will be the headphones on you. There will be a CD release coming up, um, most likely uh, in September or June, depending on how quickly things. Okay. Quick question: When people are listening to the CD. Is it best to live with head, head listen with headphones? Speaking to what you were just saying, is it best to listen to head with headphones? Is it more effective, or can you just listen in your car? Is it less effective? I know sometimes. Some of this music I wouldn't listen to in the car at all because it's too powerful. It'll put you in a trance. Oh. And you won't be safe to drive. Oh, um, good to know. The, the songs, sure. You should put warning signs yeah, on your. Because they sell they do. sell better with warning signs. But uh, the. Um, if you want to use music as a healing tool, treat it like a healing session. Lie down for an hour and okay, put sense. on headphones or, or a quiet room with the, and just let the sound bathe you, let feel a vibration enter you. That's where you're gonna, music will hold you so your body can go into a healing space. And, it's, and that goes for, for all music. But if the music is too, doesn't, you put on headphones and you, you know, get bored after five minutes because that means there's no substance to it. A lot of music's like white sugar. It kind of has all this fancy mm -hmm. stuff on the outside, but inside there's no substance. So. Music diabetes. All right. <laughs> so here, now everybody gets a chance to taste this music. Yes. Ah. Mm. So, uh, Michael, thanks for coming on the Thank show. And you. people can get more info at thetempleofsound.com, right? Yes. And including uh, when, the, uh, when and where the release party yes. might be. Okay. Well, we look forward to that. Awesome. So let's do that right now, and we're going to come back with uh, Jimmy Dick. Let's get some Elder. headphones. Yes. To listen to the Let's song. get rid of your headache. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Back to the show after some uh, sound healing music from Michael Moon. God, my headache's gone. Is it? You're just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually kind of is. It's good. Okay. Um, I won't well, say that I took a, a pill, but maybe no. we get rid <laughs> Well. Okay. I didn't, though, actually. Well, we're going to have some more music now. We've got uh, Native Elder Jimmy Dick joining us here. And uh, welcome, Jimmy. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Although I think I like your, uh, your real name better. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is, can you say that? Nabeogahago, meaning, that meaning man crow. Man crow. crow yeah. See, I just, I, I love the way, in speaking to Michael Moon's, um, uh, what he was talking about with the relationship between natives and animals, there is just such, um, I don't even want to say respect, it's just a harmony, it's just a, a partnership mm-hmm. that um, natives have with with their environment, animals mm. and the elements, and even your name, yeah, Man all, Crow. All, I mean, you can't get more melding than that. Are, really. We're all we're closely connected like that, interconnected. Eh? Yes, mm. and, and, and nobody understands it better mm. than, than you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal to yeah. me. I think that we really lose that. Is when that true? You're 
Jimmy, what she just said. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Okay. That's how that's how our our yeah. culture is based on uh, our spirituality, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're from uh, your Cree. Yes. And you're from uh, Moose Factory, on James Bay, which is. Uh, I'm just curious. I mean, that that's an isolated place. I mean, for people, mm-hmm. you know, from the south here. Yeah. But I mean, uh, how did you come to to find yourself in Toronto? Well, to make a long story short, I was in. North Bay one time attending high school and then I went to visit a friend in Sudbury and he said, hey, you want to go visit him? Want to go visit him with me in Toronto? So I said, all right. We came down here, visited, and we went back up and then I came back the second time. I told my dad I was going to go check it out for three weeks and that was 1975. And you never went back? No, I go back and forth, but I okay. never did for the last few years. So. Wow. Back, back to Moose Valley. How are things up there? I mean, I was there a long time ago. I told you when, but... Uh, how are things up there? It's really, uh, it's really uh, developed, you know, like uh, a lot of uh, modern, modernization stuff. Like uh, they have an indoor arena, they have a plaza on our, on our reserve. Do they have a movie theater? They have, they have a theater, not not exactly movie theater, but they they use the arena complex to. Now is that in Moose Factory yes, or Moose yeah. and E? Moose Moose Factory. Moose Factory. Do you still have to take? A wooden canoe? Yes, uh, a freighter canoe to get over there. Yeah. yeah. Except for the winter, you couldn't drive across and yeah. the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Wow. So do you think that these changes are for the better? Well, do you think the kids are losing it's, their it's heritage? Go- it's good in, in some, to some capacity, I guess, you know, like, mm. uh, you know, like getting involved in, in the technical, technological world. You can sit at home and talk to somebody and... Arizona or <laughs> yeah so in some ways you're saying it's good because it's integrating with everybody else but then it's but is it is it also separating from h- taking them more away from your roots and from the respect for the environment like we we're saying that partnership is that being lost do you uh, think to some w- to some way I guess you know like um, mm. uh, the language the the, the, the culture is, uh, is strong and is strengthened in some way but also it, it, it takes away from the, the practice of uh, you know, living in, uh, off the land. And yes, they, yes. They still have some parts of it, like hunting, you know, and ceremonial gatherings, but it's just technology that's taken it away too, but also spreading that information is, is, is another same thing, right? You know? mm. so it's, good, it's good and bad. <laughs> like anything else. Now, Jimmy, you're here in Toronto, and you've been involved in a group called Eagle Heart. Yes, it, yeah. For 30 since years, one of the founding members. Yes, yeah, since, uh, yeah, it's going to be couple of weeks will be 30 years old. Wow, congratulations. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Again, so though, Eagle Heart. Again, another animal reference. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's, you never, you, it's, you never get away See, from she's that. Cat Heart. Mm-hmm. She's got a cat I'm, heart. I'm, I'm a cat <laughs> <person>. <laughs> Crazy cat lady. Mm-hmm. Now, and, uh, and you brought a drum. A hand drum, yes. A yeah. da- oh, no, d- what do you want to, do you want to perform? Just I was going to sing some songs, you know, just to explain yeah. The language, some of these words have language, some of them just have a, a melody, you know. So, But that's, how, that's what our group has uh, been doing since 1984, doing public legal education on Native people, issues, concerns, and, you know, about so the where do you So where do you have these performances, Jimmy? Wherever, wherever uh, we're invited, you know. Okay. Yeah, you know, from the home right to the different uh, group uh, centers or, you know. Gatherings. Do you have something coming up that we can? Well, we we have uh, not till probably uh, you know when our group has a birthday thing, you know. Okay. We're gonna probably just do it at the home and do a a, a drum ceremony, you know, blessing, uh, mm. drum feast, you know. And wow. The members Beautiful. Sit and sing and so uh, what what do you want to do? Or do you want to do something for us right now? Yeah, I can sing this song. It's our group, uh, it's our theme song for our drum group. And uh, what this song says that uh, we all come from James Bay, who's who's singing here, who's singing here. That's what this song says. uh, Okay. Free language.
song, like I said, it, it talked about who we are, where, where we're from, and, and the language I was born and raised with, you know. Is that Cree? A Cree language, yeah. So I, I didn't understand a word of that, mm -hmm. but I felt mm -hmm. it was very powerful. I felt how um, in sync you are yeah. with it. And it was very interesting for me because you had a hard time you were sitting and you couldn't you yeah. couldn't feel it. Is is was it res restrictive yeah, for you? Yeah, because I couldn't really move my drumstick on the other. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. So, do you take your drum with you everywhere you go? Except the bed. <laughs> 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 so I, I I just I'm curious. Uh, I mean, you were talking about how you guys, uh, the Native North Americans. Um, are in touch with nature, mm -hmm. and uh, it's almost making me think that, um, you know, we're all from nature originally, and that you know, as as culture has gone around the world, mm -hmm. different cultures have kind of left nature behind to a certain extent and kind of gone, mm -hmm. I don't know, more technological or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, right? Yes, yeah. And I'm just curious, I mean, we had Michael Moon with sound he healing, and with, uh, it's kind of been a theme today, mm -hmm. and here you are doing some music uh, that uh, I'm sure has some kind of impact, mm -hmm. uh, healing mm -hmm. and otherwise, on, on anybody who hears it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, um, because uh, it just seems to me that we're just further removed from nature than, than you are. Mm -hmm coming recently from so close to the land. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, you know, with things like Fukushima and that, and, and the impact it's having on the land mm -hmm. and on the planet, I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about uh, what we're doing wrong or what we might be able to do to turn that situation around and create an environment that we can all be, feel good about living in, that, that supports us. Well, our people said a long time ago that, you know, if anything that's developed and that's out of control, you know, that they should ask the Native people for help. And, and I think Fukushima is just a good example, you know, how, how dangerous, you know, things but if could it get and be. And <laughs> but, okay, so to ask the Native for help, but mm -hmm. if we don't understand that we're creating the problem, we don't even understand to ask the Native mm -hmm. for help. So can you just jump in without us asking for help? <laughs> Because I'm going to ask for help. Yeah. I'm one here, and I'm asking mm -hmm. for help. Yeah. Um, but I if we don't understand that we're the ones creating the problem, we're not going to understand to come to you for help. I absolutely believe yeah. what, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not so sure the rest of us, or we wouldn't have created the problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. well, so how, can you guys in come and just help anyway? <laughs> yes, I think that's, that's another thing that um, our people are doing, but you don't even see it, is that they, they, they pray. They pray and do these ceremonies, you know, for the, the land and the people. You know, there's uh, that's a that, that interconnection again with uh, mm -hmm. with our spirituality. You know, like that. that's what really saves us from uh, what's going on, really. And uh, but also we need to create awareness. You know, like we we are the environment. You know, us ourselves. You know, we're not separated. You know, like whatever we put in our body comes from the earth, most of it, right? <laughs> Except for the air and, mm -hmm. you know. Even, we, even when you think about GMOs, <laughs> even when you think of artificial foods, they're created from some substance of life. So even mm -hmm. that, as much as it's manipulated, it's still the, the source itself has to be connected to the earth in some way. It's, that's what's manipulated, but it's got to be something. That's a genetic... Uh, thing you're talking about is not uh, the genetic manipulation yeah, genetic or, foods genetic yeah, uh, yes, genetically modified yeah. foods sorry yes yeah and that, i think that's uh that's just the power and control you know of the of the plants and animals or food the environment yeah you know they want to control that you know just like money mm. you know they patent mm -hmm. medicine and so you know, we're the only ones that are getting richer the pharmaceuticals or yes, the big, that's, big, big yeah. companies and and, uh, but uh, again, that's another thing that uh, people got to open their eyes up to. You know what's going on. You know, like you know, like what you, what you're putting in your body, right? Is really, you know, if it's really healthy for you or not. You know, it's up to you to. You know, people don't listen anyway. Sometimes you know, they just but it's, it's, it's <laughs> interesting though because I found that mm -hmm. music 
is so powerful. What mm-hmm. you did was so powerful. I felt like I was putting that in my body, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. So I felt like even though I'm not actually eating that, mm-hmm. I'm actually, I am absorbing that music. And mm-hmm. I can see how that would actually have a healing effect because it mm-hmm. is a form of digesting to mm-hmm. some degree. Even though I may not be eating something with my mouth, I actually could feel that being put into my body. I could mm-hmm. feel it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Mm-mm. Okay. Now, Jimmy, I know you do a lot of great work in mm-hmm. the city, uh, first of all, with Eagle Heart, mm-hmm. uh, the, the group, and uh, but you also work at Seneca College. Yes, I'm their, I'm their traditional resource person for the students, uh, the native staff there, and for the college itself, too. And what else uh, are you involved with that we should know about? Oh, well, um, I also do uh, like ceremonies here with, in the community, in the native community. Like me and my wife, we are asked to do a lot of ceremonies sometimes. Uh, for little kids when they do like a coming out ceremony, mm-hmm. walking out they call it. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes, you know, when a woman's delivering a baby, sometimes they invite me. You do me. that when a woman's delivering a baby? Yeah, we, we'd, sing, we'd sing music. Well, sing I guess the, that would help you to push sing, more. Sing the songs, <laughs> and, you know, sing welcome songs for the baby and then also uh, to, uh, to run the sweat lodge, the sweat lodge ceremony. Wow. And then uh, I also do sun dance, you know, that's really... Where do you do sun dances? I do sun dance. I, I go travel to South Dakota. Okay, so you my, go to the States. Yeah, yes, yeah. And what's that? It's a, it's a purification ceremony for, for men and women. And it's just connecting to the, to the environment, the, the universe, and, and praying for your family. You don't go out with, you don't eat any food for four days and water for four days. No water either? Yeah, yeah no water, you know, pure water. So they would dance from sunrise till late evening, afternoon sometimes, and they they pray to that sun. Wow. Pray for, for their families, the environment, you know, the, the way of life, and and you do that for four days. And... Uh, and then they offer their flesh after at the, at, on the third or fourth day, you know, just a little we have, you know, and then. And you then, offer your flesh, like yeah, okay. yeah. They 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 pierce you on your on your skin. They, they'll cut it like like this, and they'll jab wow. you something and put a piece of stick, a piece of wood in there. But they do it for the men. They put it on their chest, you know, on their arms, or on the back. That's an offering. They say it's almost like the same thing when. When a woman gives birth, that same pain, you know. Okay. And then when the, the tree, they, they, there's a tree in the middle in the circle, and they hang all their prayer, their prayer flags, and they dance, mm-hmm. dance around that tree all, all, all four days, and they say that that tree represents heaven, you know, or the spirit world. So the Creator and everybody hears you praying, all these prayers, you know, and then, and then, you know, you're sacrificing yourself, you're not doing. You know, eating or drinking water, but also sometimes you're you're away from family. You can't really mm-hmm. contact family. You know, so that's another thing about you know how how meaningful that water is to you, precious. You know, mm-hmm. and then also that that food. Sometimes you know we have food, you just throw it away, you don't yes. eat it. You know, yeah. yes. but you know, pay, have more respect for it. That's what that teaching is. Because sometimes they say in the future that's the way we, we might have to go for four days or a few days without food and water. So that's a, that's the time the to practice, yeah, yeah. training, you know, because yeah. that way your mind will go crazy. Yeah. You know, you're you're doing something, you know, connecting, you know. Wow. You know, and if you're not really fully grounded and connected, you kind of lose it, you know. Do you um do you find a difference <coughs> between um, the natives here versus the natives in the states? Is there any difference at all? Oh, they just got they're just different language, I guess. You know, they okay. don't have a same similar way of life we have, and just. The language is different, you know, but we can communicate sign language sometimes, you know. <laughs> but now, well, I'm, it just occurred to me, but there are different tribes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you mentioned uh, your Cree, yes, your wife is Anishinaabe, yes, right? And in the U.S., they have different, yeah, I mean, Lak- some of the tribes cross yeah, over. But yeah, Lakota, or yeah. The, the Dakota, Lakota, or Dene, or sometimes they're yes. better known as Navajo. Yes, I've heard of you yes. Know, the, the Cherokees. Yes. Uh, yes. But is there a tra- Seminole? Is there a difference sometimes between the the nations, uh, the First Nations, uh, uh, similar to the kind of differences between, you know, European nations? Mm-hmm. In other words, some rivalries. Yes. Nations, yeah. Like tribes. like for example, Six Nations here over here, Brantford uh, area where we live right now. 
you know how they do things us in our in our gatherings we 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 do things following the sun you know mm -hmm. like oh, clockwise okay. yes mm -hmm. but where they come from they go the other way they go oh my goodness so do you so, guys butt head sometimes well no not all the time but uh we do we, we, we respect that they say that they're they're greeting the sun that way when they go that way you know, well they're so. really from the other side of the border anyway yeah. right well they're right here Brantford, no. ontario and yeah but know, they came up here after the war of 1812, yeah 1812 right? yes yeah. yeah they were the ones that the allies of yeah. you know, wow. canada so you know but again that's uh and and, and where, where i come from too you know the way we do things and it's in a circle too but also the the men would sit on one side of the house and the women on one on the other side you know the men the women would sit on the north side of the house mm. that's the woman's you know and the men would sit on the south side and the gathering you know and they mm. do ceremonies but other people they would sit man woman man woman the other places you know okay. it's different so kind of Shocks everybody. Well, <laughs> you know, <so. laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so. well, this has uh, been great to have you on, yes. uh, Jimmy, and uh, thanks for doing this. And uh, wish you all the best with everything. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, just, do you have a website or anything if people want to get in touch? No, I don't have a website, but I'm on Facebook or. Uh, so but uh, but uh, you know, people know us around around town here. That uh, you know. So if they want to look you up on Facebook, what yeah, are they, they uh, look me up. Call, what? look for me. D Jimmy, Man? Jimmy, Jimmy Dick, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah, Jimmy. Toronto. <laughs> I like Crow Man better. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, listen, thanks for doing this yeah, today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we were talking about the, you know, the technology, mm -hmm. the impact of technological. Uh, maybe oh, gonna, I, I smell a video we're coming gonna, on. We're going to, you know, we got to be careful. Uh, actually, we did get a video from the future. We did. Yeah. And you may think that's impossible, Sandra. But because we don't have time travel, but the people in the future do. And so they beam this back. Oh, wow. And it's got to do with the large so hate. Back to the future, is that? Mm. I'm not going to comment, but <laughs> it's to do with the large hadron collider. We're going to watch this oh, now. Nothing. And we're going to come back and just wrap the show up right okay. after that. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Crow Man. My name is Anthony Gibbons. I'm recording this message in June of 2026. There is no such thing as time travel, but I'm entrusting this message to Western Union, who will hold it until such time that it could be transferred into the past. I hope the technology becomes available. If so, I'm certain this message will be received in time. First off, let me dispel some fears. The universe survived. No black hole was opened, and there was not a total protonic reversal. In fact, many great scientific breakthroughs came as a result. We, we now have uh, uh, recordable quantum holographic disks, which allow you to keep updated multiple copies of data, uh, plus you can make new copies simply by breaking off a piece of the disk. They're perfect for copying music. Uh, oh, and we have those uh, lightsabers from Star Wars. They don't do any uh, damage, though. They're cool for lighting nightclubs, so that's nice. Uh, um, uh, medical science has also benefited. Uh, they say the average lifespan is increased by uh, 30 years, but there's not enough data to verify that. We do, however, have a lot of old people, uh, which is great because I'm in my mid-60s now, and I'd like to think that I'll have plenty of friends for another few decades. Uh, but but, but let, me, let me get to my point. Uh, all of these discoveries were, were side effects. Everything we have now is due to the, to the research that went into building the collider, but not from actually switching it on. Geneva scientists, everything is in your notes. Please review them and make cool stuff. Turning the collider on only accomplished one thing. The color red was damaged. Everything else in the universe seems to be fine, but there's a part of the visible light spectrum which is blasted out of existence. Nobody really noticed at first. They just thought their clothes had faded or the TV was messed up. But I noticed. I've been telling people for years that red was redder, but I can't get it through to them because just nobody really seemed to notice. They're, they're so used to strawberries being red-like that, you know, they have no conception of true redness. Look at green, I say to them. Do you see how green green is? It's so green! Now think about red being as red as green is green. They just nod condescendingly. So please, I beg of you, do not switch on the Large Hadron Collider. The universe will be deprived of a basic color. I know you may think I'm crazy, or, or even that if this is true, you won't mind that much, but, but you can't grasp it until it happens, and by then it's too late. Please, dear science, but don't flip the switch. Thank you.
Oh, uh, I, I think also that that really dark navy blue is gone, but I could never really see it. All right, we're back here on the show, and as you can see, the color red was damaged by the um, LHC, which is uh, only one letter away from THC, which is the Happy Crew, and Lalo's joining us uh, oh, from the Happy oh Crew. Oh, my God. I have to, okay, and, um, now my uh, headache is back. And, and, and look, the color red has been damaged. Look at this. You call this red? You know. It's red-like. It's not real red. I'm diluted. I'm really diluted red. Not, it's artificial. It's all. I'm a GMO. Also, you know who else? I'm a has walking got GMO. Red? Lalo's got. That's not a real red. Why is red not as red as green as green? What is going on here is the, the that happy crew has built a time machine. That time machine is working. It's going in the studios of that channel. We're getting phone calls from the past. We're getting phone calls from the future. It's, oh, it's getting crazy. Okay, but wait a second. Okay, what are you getting? How are you getting contacted before they had the phone from the past? Well. We're not really sure, and that's oh. what the whole shocking wow. thing about it is. Somehow they're tuning into the telephone waves, and the phone's ringing, and they're there. Oh my God, that's amazing! It is. It's incredible. Wow. I don't know how you handle that. Well, I don't know how I handle anything really down here at that channel, <laughs> you know. But because uh, every day it's weird. It's very weird. So you know what? Okay, so we should talk a little bit about what Lalo does here. I mean, I know you're the glue. I, I consider you glue. Well, you um, keep everything going and together. The kind you sniff or the kind you stick no, things no, no, together no. with. No, no, no. I'm not into sniffing glue. I don't even know what a spliff is. Okay? Right. Okay. So, so I just know you are the glue that keeps everything together. You're a binder. I think I'm actually crazy. And and that's oh, that would the, have to be that's the glue that, that keeps it all together. Crazy, crazy glue. glue. I'm crazy glue. Yeah. I am crazy glue. I'm living, breathing crazy glue. That's, Talk that's about what it toxic. is. Toxic. <laughs> I don't and, and I'm and I could be toxic to evil. Oh wow. I'm very toxic to evil. Um, and this is why we had Jimmy here. Yeah. And this is why we had Michael here because they're bringing, they're the cleansing and we had Sunshine and Laura to do all the cleansing. Right. Really important that Jimmy was here. I I did invite him down here because I felt it it that it's really important for us um, to connect with the vibration of the people of this land who were here for so much longer, mm -hmm. uh, who kept the land pristine for thousands of years before we came along, and I'm really proud um, uh, to be uh, here at that channel and to be mm -hmm. able to have that energy come in. Uh, along with the rest of the weirdness that goes on here that I love, which is really why I decided to come on Liquid Lunch Show, is because I really love that channel, and there's really cool stuff going on here. And you're doing so much on Facebook. There's a ton of stuff. All you have to do is hook up on Facebook. Do you Facebook. have to tell Hugh what, I'm on always Facebook? on Facebook? Oh, oh. What are you, a scientist? Oops. I'm always on I Facebook. I can't believe she's on Facebook. Oh. Just a little. <laughs> Just happens to be on when I check in that's all which is not often okay so what's not, going on tell us about the cluster bump well i besides the fact that i'm working really hard not on facebook uh we are Certainly. having a big networking event it's an open house everybody's invited you're invited to bring uh your friends anybody you want to work with anybody you want to co-create with um we are doing that on February 15th from 3 to 7 that's free and then we're having the soul explosion and that's going to be from seven onwards. Uh, we have some amazing guests. Uh, Ravel uh, from oh. Windhorse Rising Music. Beautiful music. Oh. We have DT. Is it DT? Oh, is DT going to yes. be there too? DT and T3. T3 is performing. Oh that's my right. God, I love those guys. I the hip hop, them. aware hip hop. I'm going to sing you some can tunes. Rap with them. Hugh maybe can rap with them because he really wants to learn how to do that. The best part about. Working at that channel and Hugh being my boss is that he plays music. That's my favorite wow. part. That is my favorite part. So we are going to have nice. some food too. Jamaica House is coming down and they're going to provide food for us. And wow, it sounds like a lot of fun. 
I hope so. So it's going from three to seven, then seven starts a solar explosion. That goes till one or two? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll kind of um, probably wrap up the main performances. Uh, we're going to have this amazing seven-piece folk band. They're an experimental folk, soul, and blues band. Wow. And uh, they write all their own music. They're coming from St. Catharines. Beautiful. Now, is there a fee for this, Lalo? It's $10 for the Soul Explosion. Okay. Uh, but the networking event is free prior to that. Okay, okay. And uh, we have asked Michael, who is on the show today, yes. if he wants to play, and he's going to get back to us. We don't know. Okay, wow. Now, mm. will he play it as a part of Soul Explosion? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I was, I'm actually really interested in what you're doing um, right now, Sandra, with your Shift Into One project. And um, I was wondering if... Not only if you could um, come down and tell us about it, but if you could just tell me a little bit about it right now. Well, we've got to actually we've got two things going on right now, and Shift Into One is one of them, and Shift Into One is really um, a way of uh, exploring. It's, it's an understanding of who humanity is um, from the origin of the species. It's basically the physics, the emotional and mental physics of what I call the human experiment. So we're at the part of understanding who we are on an emotional and mental level. And these are actually the physics that are the round table that seeded humanity. Mm. So it's really the origin. And actually, it, you know, it's like Einstein said, in order to solve a problem, you can't solve it from the same level of awareness that created it. So to truly understand who we are, we have to go beyond this paradigm and understanding who we are from beyond this paradigm because we're still caught up in the drama we're still caught up in in believing this is all real you know and what so i find this very, really really interesting sandra is because um well i'm on facebook all the time and there was this little post about uh why people are so attracted to jesus and muhammad and buddha well i think that what you're saying is true that we actually have human teachings that have to do with our mind and our emotions that predate religion and um so do you feel like shift into one is one of those things that is actually returning us to our original human teachings that have to do with uh humanity as a whole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the same the same way that jesus teachings mm -hmm really appealed to the whole world. Yes, and it's exactly, that's exactly a very good way to put it. It's, it's not even so much returning, it's about accessing who we always have been. So we now have the energy on the planet to actually access that multidimensional nature. All Jesus was, was an advanced human. He just was a person who understood who he was multidimensionally. We all have the power to be Jesus, and we all, it's time. We are, a, we are at a time where you, even you, can walk the I am path. Even you can become Jesus. <laughs> well, I think, I think he musician. can. No. He's already kind of yes. Jesus in his Actually, own way. Actually, he really is, I, and we all are, I, and that's very, that's very true. And this really is about accessing your multidimensional nature, and that's, that's how powerful we are. And um, with Jimmy and the natives, one of my best friends is native, and she says they're star people. Natives are star people. They're, they're not from here either. They have this understanding. That is why they understand their connection to I their I think we all have star origins. Yes. Um, I think the future and the past are kind of almost the same thing. But it was recommended to me um, that I actually take one of your courses. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay, so the first, the first level is the eight-week intensive, and that is an eight-week program, and Hugh actually took it when it was kind of, um, at the very beginning, he took it when it was a 12-week. It's actually become very different. We actually call it cracking the consciousness code because that's what it actually does. The level of um, detail, the microscopic level that we get into in understanding the emotional and mental physics of the human experiments actually cracks the consciousness code. And when are you starting your, your course? Uh, Feb uh, February 23rd, Sunday. So 2 to 4.30. We're also doing it online, which starts February 26th. And people who actually do the physical can stay, can double up and do the online. And people who do online, some people are not living in Toronto, but they might be able to make it. And so all we have to do is go to the Shift Into One website. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Well, that's yes. good. So Thank you for asking. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, I really did want to know. 
Uh, and if anybody wants to know about the cluster, uh, the cluster bomb, what's happening, all you have to do is call 416-204-9951. And uh, we're really happy to answer your questions down here. February 15th, right? That's right. Or Facebook, awesome. because when she gets the chance, she'll get back to you. But expect a delay because she's really busy working. Yeah. She's busy unfriending people. It may not be so immediate. <laughs> Why? Just block his ears. I do love okay. Facebook. I hate to say it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure something better will come along. Okay. We're you know good? what? That is how. What? Thank you to Facebook because that's how you found out about Jimmy. That's right. That's how we found out about a native elder. So there you go. That's a good use of technology. Yes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. So for she's doing in. her job. Yes, she is. That's it for the show, people. So thanks, everybody, for tuning Thank in. It was you. a great show thanks today. Thanks, you. everybody, awesome for show. coming in awesome and being show. on the show. Sandra. Miss you. And the whole crew here at that <laughs> panel doing an awesome job. Yay. The glue, and, the crazy glue. And even the people that just come in on Tuesdays. Okay, thanks, everybody. See you next time. All right, bye. <laughs> I'm a crazy glue. I'm like a Don't you know that you